Good afternoon and welcome to Battle Pickering, home of this year's National Axe Throwing Championship, hosted by the National Axe Throwing Federation. My name is Tom Black. Beside me is Ian Bobby Christensen, and we will be with you here today, bringing you all the live action of the semifinals and finals as we move forward here today. Welcome, everybody. We're incredibly excited. This is the largest urban axe throwing tournament that has ever been held. We are looking at a field of 192 competitors over the course of the day. You know, we could not be more excited. We really want to, uh, to show you the depth and the scope of how incredible this competition has been. Uh, you know, at, at this point, we're going to bring the bracket up so you can see exactly how big the competitive field was. If you can see, you can barely read the names. They're not legible because this bracket is so large. 192 competitors over the course of three separate venues in the greater Toronto area here in Canada. They've whittled down to the top 64, being shuttled in from different areas over the course of the day, starting as early as 10 a.m. We are now going through this bracket, and we're going to bring you some of that live action. Tom, if you want to speak a little bit towards uh, towards this prize pool. Yes, yeah, so, so thanks to our sponsors here today, they have allowed us to provide a $20,000 prize pool, which will go to the top 12 players today. Um, as you can see there on, our, on your graphic, the first prize takes home $10,000 today, second prize takes home $3,500, while third place goes home with $2,000. As we move on to the next page here, fourth place will be taking home $1,000. Fifth and sixth take home $750. Seventh and eighth will go home with $500 each. And nine through 12 will walk away with $350. As you can see, it's the largest prize pool ever collected for an urban axe throwing tournament. And we couldn't be happier to bring it to you today. It's, it's just, I mean, if you're looking around the room, it's something a little breathtaking to see all these people in the same place to celebrate this sport. And we really couldn't do that without some of our sponsors, right? Oh, for sure. And if, if we're talking about these people who've made this huge event possible, uh, you know, if I, I want to single some people out, Home Depot, Royal Bank of Canada, Bose Beer, Woodhouse Brewery. I want to talk about Cherry Street Barbecue, who's in the back providing everybody some, uh, some delicious food bait shop doing the screen printing of t-shirts for all our competitors. And we have, of course, Faf Harley Davidson you know, chiming in with, uh, with some prize money for our competitors. It, it wouldn't be possible. There's, there are too many, you can see them up on the screen, too many sponsors uh, to go through. They've all been incredibly generous in supporting our sport and our community. We want to give a big thank you to all of them. Yes, without them, as you said, it wouldn't be possible here today. They've too many to mention all at once, but you can see them all popping up on your screen there. We will be joining action live here between Strawn Riley, last year's champion, and Sinowicki. So as we come into this one here, we're in round one, we're on the third axe, as both players have thrown three straight bullseyes, and we are tied at 15, heading into the fourth axe. As you can see, they have very similar throws. It's this easy step and very smooth release. Not, su not surprising as both of them actually worked together at Battle Pickering. So I can see a little bit of emulation between the throws of, uh, of Strawn, our champion from last year, and Sinawiki, his former compatriot here. As you saw there on the final axe, both players hit their clutches. That's the two green dots up in the top left and right corners. They are worth seven points each. The highest point value on the board, but can only be thrown on that fifth and final throw. And we are now in big axe to decide round number one. We start off with points, highest point value. I think a big axe almost like a sudden death match. If the players are matching their throws, then we continue on until we have a winner. Both players hit a three on their first throw, which is a little uncharacteristic for both of these players. Sinowicki is a little low, and he throws a three, putting his hands on his head. I think that it's interesting seeing that fall step, the way that he's, he's putting both of his feet together and falling into it rather than keeping his feet spaced apart. And a bullseye there from Strawn, and he'll take a one to nothing lead here in, in the match. Remember, these matches go best three out of five. Yes. That's just one match. 
We have a possible two to four more, depending on how things shake out. We will be moving into best four out of seven as we get into the later rounds, but for the next few rounds, it will be best three out of five. As I love these easy throws. You can see them, they're actually stopping just ahead of the red fault line. Some people come as close as stepping on the fault line, which is perfectly legal. Stepping over the fault line, of course, is not, and that would cause a fault, which causes the loss of that person's throw. Right now, we're coming into fourth acts. Everyone is tied at bullseyes. And just to remember, everybody, in NATF rules, we go by majority of blade. So if you see something that is touching black with only a tiny portion of the, the tip of their blade, that would not count. It has to be the majority of your blade. And there we go, two clutches called and two clutches hit. We'll head back to the big axe here to decide round number two. I expect that every round of this match should probably head to big axe as both these players are very consistent hitting their bullseyes as you've seen through the first two rounds so far. So it, it is always interesting to me something that they worked out before the match even started is they were going to swap off who starts throwing big X rather than doing a rock paper scissors or some kind of uh, you know uh, determination of who is going to kick things off they're just going to swap every time they go to the tiebreaker this is a nice gentlemanly play i like it and a tough break there for sinawiki as he throws a little bit high and strong takes two to nothing lead here sinawiki's going to need to win this round three to force a round four and stay alive in the match this is the A bracket, so Sinawiki, a loss is not the end of his day. He will move on to the B bracket. But it's a tough sled from there. There really is no room for error as soon as you're in the B bracket. You need to go all out from the moment you find yourself in that position. Both players hit double bulls again. Sitting at fourth X, all tied up. This is another thing to note, which is very interesting, is, is how long they've been throwing. These, both of these players have been throwing an A bracket since 10 a.m. this morning. It's true. It's a marathon of throws. They're both going upstairs now. They're going for clutch in their final throw. Well, that Sinawiki might be a little hits. questionable. Sean hits. Sinawiki's tight, but no, he's, he's in there. The angle almost cost him, but he tucks it in. And again, four straight bullseyes and clutch for the super perfect round of 27 from each player, and that's three straight rounds with that, and we go back to bullseyes for Big X. Quick note of the rule, before either player could call clutch with bullseye, they have to be able to sink a bull, or so call clutch with Big X, I should say, they have to be able to sink a bullseye. It's a new rule that was implemented for 2019. There we go, another example of majority rules, the majority of that X is in the bullseye, so it counts. Measuring from the outside of that line in toward the middle and then the part of the axe that's outside of that line and up in the majority rules as Ian said there. As they go clutches this time and Sinawiki's high. I really do side. think this, this two step, the way that he's falling into it, I think that that's hurting him a little bit. It doesn't give you any room for error in yeah. your balance when you're moving into a big axe throw. Whereas if you watch Strawn, his setup, shoulder length apart, feet, one in front of the other, nice and steady and balanced, and he'll step into his throw. And even just seeing his, his technique has changed even slightly from his throw last year when he won the championship. He wasn't happy with it, so he critiqued a little bit, and now right. he's back with a whole new style and throwing for clutches again. Yeah, throwing clutches again. It really is, this is a, such, a, such a sport where you have to challenge yourself individually, where you have to really push the limits of what you're doing. and. It shows a lot of fortitude when uh, when you start to critique yourself at that level. Yeah. Well, and you see the skill level of these players have forced rule changes in the in the NATF. As, as last year, there was still you'd throw for a paint value. You just had to touch a paint value, and then both players would throw for points. Well, that's good. There's a clutch there for Strawn. Matt Widow is out to, to have a look here, and he says yes, it's good. And Strawn Riley moves on in the A bracket. Sinawiki gets bounced into the B. So Strawn takes it in a sweep, all three matches, best three out of five. And just I to finish the thought on the big X there, so then the rule change for this year is that now both players, as you mentioned earlier, paint is no longer an option. We start right into the points as it should be, and both players have to hit that bullseye before clutch can then be called and they can go upstairs. Absolutely, we're just finding, you know, every single year, 
we're evolving the rules a little bit more because the competition gets so much stiffer. Yes. When people are, are improving at such an exponential rate, yes. you have to make things a little more difficult. Yep, you know? sure. uh, the skill level of the players goes up and the rules have to adapt accordingly. They just keep pace with the, with the skill of the strong Rileys of the world. Great job out there, Strong. I love this. Earlier in the day, as we were watching, there were a couple matches where, even though Strawn won, there were a few shaky throws. I think it was you know, even the best of yeah. us are still human when it comes to this competition. He was having his minutes where he needed to get his sea legs under him in the competition and actually, uh, you know, settle in. Yeah. I think there are some people who, uh, who start off very hot and start to slow down because yeah. this is a bit of a marathon. And other folks who take a little time to warm up, but once they're there, they're throwing fire. Yeah, by the time you get to this point, you get into your rhythm, you get into in, in your groove and start throwing those bullseyes, hitting those clutches as you go, but definitely starting with 192 people at the start of the day right. and getting us down to this point, is it, it's grueling, if nothing yes, else. Yes, absolutely. I think to look at the 192-person uh, the field, you have to th think there's a little bit of a disadvantage sometimes in staying in A bracket because there are gaps. Yeah. When you're in B bracket, if you by that I mean you've lost one of your games, so now you're fighting back to get uh, get to the winner. Right. When you're in B bracket, you will naturally throw a few more games. You're a little yep. more active. So the tournament brackets are created that way to always give the underdog a chance. Yeah, for sure. The amount of downtime that somebody who's still in A, like those two throwers we saw, uh, are, is a little bit of a detriment if you start warming up too early in the competition. Sure. You know? You're heating up and you're starting to hit your clutches, hit your bullseyes dead on. You don't want to. You don't want to burn out. No, no. Yeah, you want to. <laughs> you're you're bang on with it. It's marathon, not a sprint. As we watch and thank our sponsors yet again as they roll through the screen there. This day would not be happening without them. The 192 people would not have been here today without our sponsors. So we thank them greatly as you see them roll along our screen there. But as we take a look at that last match that we just watched between Strawn Riley and Sinowicki, both players were perfect. Yeah. Both players were super perfect. Yeah, better and than And we have perfect. a loser that yeah. got swept. <laughs> it's, it's wild to think of that, that this is the level the competition is yeah. at. Uh, just to come back to that point, a perfect match, all bullseyes, would actually be 25 points. Right. Because, as you can see in the target, Bullseye's worth five, red rings worth three, the blue rings worth one point. Because of the evolution of the sport, the clutches were introduced in order to give the underdog, like we said, a chance at the competition to be able to come back if they were down. Those clutches are worth seven points each. Now, years later, you know, we're talking the, the sport was invented in Toronto here in 2006 by battle specifically and, and has proliferated itself all across the world. Now we're looking at a level of competition that's so good that 27s are the new standard, the yeah. new gold standard. And now Big Axe is the well, new gold standard. As we just saw, Big Axe. 27 wasn't good enough. Yeah, it wasn't good <laughs> enough. Both players threw the super perfect 81, and one of them's moving down to the B bracket. Yeah. I, I think, you know, besides thanking our sponsors, I want to thank all of the NATF members who, uh, who have participated all through the 2018 season and who are here with their competitors. And this is one of those competitions that's truly representational. You know, every single member of the NATF all across the world has the opportunity to send their competitors to this competition. You know, it is the best of the best, but we take from everybody. And I think that the, the original playing field was actually 465 people. Now we're going to another match. We're gonna cut to Please. Stefan and Jacob. So Stefan Herta, former champion here, of the National Axe Throwing Championships. He is on the right side of your screen. And Jacob will be on your left. Just gonna take a look here and see where Jacob is hailing from today. As both players, Defon is a little bit tight there. Yeah, you're gonna probably have to do a measurement to make sure that that's all good. So this is what happens when we're talking about the majority of the blade. Sometimes if there's any question, the officials will have to come in and do a measurement with the calipers to make sure it's good. Majority counting the paint is good. That is a bullseye. So we have Stefan Herta and Jacob Robbins. Jacob Robbins from London, Ontario, from Battle London. Stefan Herta hailing from Galleria Mall location that will be moving actually this year. 
moving to the stockyard to the stockyards great stuff there as they look forward to that location new battle location opening up another device now you start to see this some opponents make sure that they device something that's yes. pretty clearly a bullseye in order to give themselves a breathing room that's not what's happening here i think there might be a little fatigue on stefan's side he missed low he missed high yep. you, you've got to wonder if the day is starting to get to him he's a seasoned competitor so it's definitely not nerves yeah he's not new to this he's, he's as we look to the banners in the in the rafters here we've got four three with his name on it anyway as he looks to get a fourth there was a while where stefan was unbeatable he was the giant, and nobody could topple him. Uh, it wasn't until we got to uh, to Stron Riley last year that we saw a new face. Number two bullseyes. So we head to the fifth and final act. Stefan leading by two points as Jacob hit a three on his second throw. Clutch called by Stefan as he wants to put it away and not leave it to chance, and he splits it in half and gives the crowd a yell. Fired up. He is fired up. Split that clutch right down the middle, as you saw on your screen there just moments ago. Good Great strategic throw. play. I, I like that move. If, if you're up by two and really have a chance to take the lead, there's nothing stopping you right. from making that happen. Just put it, put it away. If you miss, then that leaves it open for the competitor. But these guys are confident in their throws. They know they can get those clutches, so they want to put that game away and not leave it to chance. You hit the bullseye, maybe you end up in big axe. And if you're not a great big axe thrower, then you don't want to leave it to that and end up losing in something you're not If you have any with. doubt, any doubt in your big axe game, you want to make sure that you're trying to put it away right off the bat. And Jacob has found his groove again as he hits four straight bullseyes after throwing a three in round number one on his second axe. He has hit bullseyes ever since. And we are tied here on the final axe at 20. Clutch hit by Jacob. And oh. Stefan is a little bit low, but he says he's good. It's good. I can see and it just from here. touching there. Just recall, remember, clutch, all you need to do is break paint for the right. clutch. Dissimilar to the actual target where you're, you're going for the majority of your blade. Clutch, if you break paint, you are absolutely good. Yeah. Yep. They've just worked out a swap. They're going to do exactly what we were talking about with uh, Sinawiki and Strawn. Jacob's going to start this round. If they tie again, Stefan will start. It really depends. Some people are a little superstitious about starting. They'd rather be the uh, the second thrower with big X to see yeah. what the first person got. I uh, when I was throwing in competition, I tended to enjoy throwing first. Yeah. I like to set the tone, put the pressure a little bit on your opponent, and Absolutely. make them make a decision. So Jacob to throw here as both players have hit their bullseyes here. So clutches are now live, and they have both chosen to throw for it. Jacob throws, and he's just wide to the left side of that right-hand clutch. He's so definitely had a line on it. I think you know, it, where you line up is really important in these clutches. Splits that left clutch right in half and gives another yell to the crowd. I think there's something a little calculated with some of those, uh, some of those yells. Some of those yells trying to just... Switching sides. Almost a little messed bit. that up. That would have been, that could have possibly been a loss of a throw. So each player, after each round, you switch sides. Even if you head to big axe, you still make that switch with your opponent just to keep things fair and keep it even. They do a rock, paper, scissors at the start to decide which, whether you're on the left or the right hand side. And from there, you just rotate each round as the match moves along. A lot of it has to do with board fidelity. Some people like more of a chewed up board, something that's worked in. Some people enjoy throwing on a, a, a fresh board because they like the even plane. Uh, personally, if you're good enough, you should be able to throw on anything. On any board, yeah. And you hear that quite a bit around the whispers through the venue today. Not, not worried about that fresh board. They just want to make sure that they've got a good board in there and they're ready to go. So we head to the final acts of round number three. Two nothing Stefan here in the match. Going clutch. Double clutch called. Jacob might be a bit high, but it looks like he's good. And Stefan is definitely both good. in. Jacob. Oh no. Jacob says up. no. And Stefan Herda moves on to the next round. What a performance. Another sweep. Breaking. Stefan is fired up. Look at that man. 
Now Jacob isn't done yet. He will move on to the next set of B bracket. It's the thing with a double elimination. This tournament it really does even the playing field. Uh, love the format that one loss doesn't put you out. Yeah, yeah. You can you can bounce back yet. And Jacob's had a great day today so far. Clearly getting to this point, he's thrown well. He had a couple missed throws there in rounds one and three that cost him the round. But from now on, he just has to forget about that, and move on, and head into the B bracket. Sure thing. So we'll have. Who do we got next, Tom? The chance and. S. Robinson. Spencer Robinson. Spenny. Spenny, I believe, is coming up. Sinawiki, who we watched just previous. And Machado coming up. But we'll see who will be playing on this side as the choice will be made by Machado. Machado will have the... As we are moving in the backdrop here behind us to get things ready, as we pan through the crowd, you can see just the vast number of people here today taking in the competition. As we said, we started at three venues today. We started at Villiers, as well as our Yorkdale location, Battle Yorkdale, and Battle Pickering. All Three venues have come down into one here for the final few rounds. As our banner comes sliding in behind us here. There we go. We'll try not to knock it's it over official. While we're up here. Welcome to the NATC Welcome 2019. The sponsored by NATF. Or hosted, sorry. Hosted, not sponsored. <laughs> the NATF, the National Axe Throwing Federation, here with members from all around the globe. We're very excited. As they pass some chairs up to us. Oh, there's one behind you there as well, Ian. Fantastic. If you would like to see. We're yeah, going to thank our sponsors again. I'd love everybody to, to pay attention to some of these great organizations that believe in our sport and believe in our community. Special thanks to Bose Beer, keeping us all hydrated. To Sherry Street Barbecue, keeping us full of sweet meat. The Greater Good Bar, making sure our competitors have a place to drown their sorrows. Fomer Rubinoff. <laughs> Obviously, Gardner Roberts, thank you so much. Longtime sponsor of the NATC, MNP, the exact same accounting needs. And Faf Harley Davidson, another partner of the NATF, thank you so much. RBC, huge supporter of what we're doing, one of our major sponsors this year, the Doc Ellis, one of the best bars in Toronto, one of the original clubhouses for the Backyard Axe Throwing League, Woodhouse Brewing another delicious local tasty beverage and all of you guys for believing in what we're doing and making sure that uh, axe throwing continues in all its glory here at the NATC. As we prepare for our next match here between Max Machado and Sinawiki. We've got Sinawiki and Max Machado both have been throwing very well. Machado actually took some really tough competition out early on in the competition. Really uh, took some competitors the limit. We're really excited to have these guys in front of us. This is just a, it's a, a playing field of experts. Oh, for sure, 100%. Like you've got people that are ranked in the hundreds that could easily be ranked in the top 10. Like oh, absolutely. The, the rankings are based on how you, how you qualify from your leagues, your home venue leagues, um, and where you place in those. So if you're in a tougher league, you may end up with a, a lower rank coming into this tournament. And find yourself playing somebody that could otherwise be ranked in the top 10. Right, and just to remember, even though this is the uh, 2019 NATC, this is amalgamated from all the stats from competitors right. in the leagues over the calendar year of 2018. So similar to the Super Bowl happening in February for the 2018 season, it's the same thing for us. We are running all the course of these games in 2018, and the top finishers with champions points have the opportunity to first compete in round one, Round one is hosted on January 6th, and it was 465 competitors. Right. Out of those 465, only 192 made it through. And even that, that's a huge step up oh, in just the absolutely. growth of the sport over the last year, even. Every year it's bigger, every year it's better. It is, uh, it is a real impressive feat to see what some of these competitors have even accomplished in one calendar year. From last year to this, 
to see some of these people who, you know, are two and out last year, 2018 NETC, already still in the competition, still in A bracket, having improved their game so much that they're giving seasoned veterans a yeah. run for their money. For sure. And as you see here, we have, it's not just battle, it's all the members of the National Axe Throwing Federation. Our match coming up here that we're going to be watching will be Max Machado from Ray Jack Throwing in Montreal. Yep. Now, Max has been a great, uh, one of those great ambassadors for Rage. He's a frequent flyer of some of the tournaments in the U.S. Yep. Last seen at the Choptoberfest tournament in Cherry Hill, right. New Jersey. So, it, as well as thanking our sponsors, thank you, a big thank you to all the NATF members that you mentioned earlier um, for, for making, for being here today and, and helping grow this sport. Absolutely. You know, these NATF members are why the NATF has become what it is. Yeah. And a lot of these people who believe in us from the beginning and our new members every single month joining up, they are the lifeblood of the sport. Right. You know, We're bringing people in who uh, who believe in, in not only what we do, but what it represents to, to do something as, as fringe as axe throwing and, and make it a mainstream sport. Without them, we wouldn't have such an amazing turnout and we wouldn't have just such a great community of throwers. And you see some of the camaraderie there as the players do rock, paper, scissors, best two out of three to decide whether you're on the left or the right-hand side. And Max Max and Sinewicki having a little bit of fun there with the rock, paper, scissors before their match starts. And both players starting off strong with double bullseyes. Here in round number one. Still best three out of five here. Ooh, Ooh and a the tight low. From Sinewicki. Now, because the bottom of Sinewiki's axe is rolled out, he's asking for a device. I think that's a little bit hopeful. It's a bit hopeful, but you never know. The paint is in your favor, as we like to say, so it, it could be okay with that bottom portion of the axe up, but you never want to leave it to chance here in, at this stage of the tournament anyway. You want to get that device out. When in doubt, device it out, I like to oh tell no, our... It's looking close. And it is, it is good. A five. So cool this. Good cool this move. Point. So it's a good call from Sinewiki as he gets that five points and keeps the match tied at 10. Pardon me, keeps the round tied at 10. Like we were saying before, starting to miss low, especially consistently missing low on the target, is a bit of a sign of fatigue. Yeah. Uh, this far into the tournament is deep into what's going on. It, it's uh, very indicative of somebody losing a little bit of their arm power if you consistently see yeah. those, you know, deviceable throws. And to be fair, there are some competitors who will throw something questionable just to give themselves a little, a bit, little of bit of a, a break. A little bit of a break. And it speaks to the skill level of the sport at this point. If you're able to place it in such a way that you can need the device, as Machado is close there. It's going to no be a call device. For the device. If Sinawiki got two tight ones there, so he's encouraging Machado to have a device at it. Don't just pull that one out. He looks a little skeptical that it's going to work in his favor, but Matt Widow's out to give us a measure here with the with the device. And it is, in fact, a three, it's but it was three. close. Final axe. This is the question. Is Sinawiki going to go and try to close it out with a clutch, or is he going to go bullseye? He has a two-point lead here on the final axe. Clutch called. He's going to close it out if he can. Through the elbow, but he's high. So Max is going to just go for points. And he Bullseye does. to win. And that puts it away. And that's the risk we were talking about earlier in our right. last match. Whether you go for it or not, Stefan went for it. He split it in half. That ends that round. Right. Here, Sinawiki misses. Leaves the door open for Machado. A little risk reward, but. Nice clean bullseyes from our competitors right now. It could just be jitters, you know? I don't want to say that, uh, well, it's rotating a little low. Tucks it in. So we stay tied. Axe number three here in round two is Sinuiki pops it back up into the middle of the bullseye there. Machado matches, keeping us tied at 15. Into the fourth act. Now this is the B bracket now. We are playing a B bracket match which means a loss here marks the end of the day right. for one of these two competitors. They're going upstairs, going for clutches. They're tied at 20, so we have ourselves a good old-fashioned clutch party here. 
That's good. Sinowicki makes the adjustment and gets it. Machado looks like he's just low. He has a look and he gives the thumbs down himself. So Sinowicki has tied the match one round apiece. One thing you'll see with Max's throws is those, they are almost under rotating. They're touching very close. Handle, handle to blade, almost both at the target. As we're tied 1-1 here, heading to round number three. The two players just having a little bit of a moment there. Take a breather. And we move forward here. Double bowls. Tied at five, axe number two of round three. Machado now on your left, Sinowicki on the right. And a perfect throw there from Machado. Straight down the pipe. Sinowicki matches. As you can hear some excitement coming through our mics from some of the other matches taking place in the venue yet. On the far side, we just had a clutch. Big axe touch from Spenny, as they are currently tied. Spenny and Lachance tied at 27, one round apiece in round three as well. And a big axe clutch from Spenny as he awaits Lachance's throw. And Lachance hits, and the crowd goes wild. We know we don't have video on that one as we're currently watching Matt Widow devising Max Machado's throw here. It's a little tight. He's definitely doing a few readings to make sure that he's uh, making the right call. Sometimes it's just a millimeter separating a bullseye from a three. And remember, it's always majority of blade. It's, and a, it's three. a three. Tough call there. Widow sweating from just making that call. This leads me to assume, I'm not sure, based on the last time that uh, Sinowicki tried to put it away, do you think that might dissuade him from trying to go clutch at the end? He, it depends on his confidence with his big axe. He's going clutch here, so I guess not. That answers it there, he's not concerned. Hey. He's hit his other clutches, and this time it works out. You gotta be bold, you gotta be bold. And we head to round number four, Sinowicki with a two to one lead. It is best three out of five, so a win here for Sinowicki, and he will move on. Pause there, and we're Cheers ready to go. Axes. Here we are. And that match on the far side is getting ever more exciting and still going in round three. As our players here, Sinowicki and Machado, hit double bowls. We've got double clutches happening on the far side with Big X. Double bowls again. As both players are in awe of what's happening on the other side. As they hit their own bullseyes, they're still keeping a close eye on that match on the far side. You never know who you're going to face later That's on. True. It's really good to have the uh, little bit of intel, a little recon on the people you might uh, end up seeing in the tournament. As you see some thumbs up and clapping hands for from Sinowicki there as he takes a peek over. Machado staying focused here as he hits his bullseyes and we're tied at 20 here, fifth and final act. Here we go. Big smiles on both competitors' face. Clutch party. Taking place, both players throwing for clutch. Sinowicki has found his groove since missing that first one. As he splits it in half, Machado. Also hey. hits, and we're going to Big Axe. Tied at 27 here. Great performance from these two guys. And all that while well, keeping an eye on the other match <laughs> that's happening beside them and keeping each other informed. It's easy to get uh, to get lost in it when you're just facing one person, and you have to remember there's a plenty more <laughs> in the tournament field. This is not the uh, the end of the bracket by any stretch of the imagination. You see some of the different personalities here. A lot of a lot of competitors are just focused on throwing their throws, not paying attention to anything happening around them. But these two, a little lighter, having fun, throwing some axes. As they both hit three, Sinowicki Double had a chance threes. to put it away there. So they must still hit their bullseyes before they can go clutch here. As Machado to throw. 
First axe here. Sorry, second axe, but he'll be the first thrower. And he throws another three. So Sinowicki with a bullseye here puts it away. A three, we go to a third round of big axe. And, and he puts it, it away. And Sinowicki has eliminated Max Machado. Wow. A valiant effort from Machado. But Sinowicki, Andrew Sinowicki is moving on in the B bracket. And that ends the day for Max Machado, who gives some hugs and some high fives to the crowd for a job well done. It was a great performance from Max. Really, really, really put it all out there. I uh, loved watching him compete today. Sinowicki, home field advantage, you know? This is his home court. It's sure. definitely home court. He is uh, he is one of the lead members here at Battle Pickering. And uh, don't ever discount a little bit of that. I think that uh, in, in this type of tournament, being able to be familiar with the surroundings and feel comfortable with everybody around you is, you know, it's not to be discounted. Yeah. And so Max Machado finishes the day tied for ninth place overall. Which so he's is in very the money. respectful. He, yes, he is in the money. He'll get $350 as we take a look at the brackets to see where we're at so far today. We'll be coming up on your screen there now as we're moving along through the day. Lachance and Robinson are playing on the far side. That was Spenny over there. As you just saw, Sinawiki knocked out Machado. We also have on the other side, on the left, we have Cappuccino, that's Stefan, facing Mike Kump. And that's a big match. Both that are incredibly accurate throwers. Kump is actually kind of a, a favorite to, uh, to make it in the tournament final. And that was the B bracket as we take a look at the A bracket and who's still moving along here in the A. We're down to the final four of the A bracket with Strawn Riley, our defending champion. Facing Marquez. Rander Marquez, Rander Marquez, Battle Yorkdale thrower, uh, who's actually fairly new, only been at it for about a year and a half, almost two years. Uh, threw an 81 in his very first season of the league. That's a three 27s in a row. That's three more than perfect rounds in a row. Not bad which is for a, a start. A, not bad. Not bad for a start. Definitely something to, uh, to hold on to. Going to see a lot of those in the competition to come. And we saw our other match there before the graphic slipped away was Stefan Herda, former champion, playing Julio Romero out of Battle Yorkdale as well. As we return here for a match that we will see coming up here between Strawn Riley and Rander. And Rander, as we just talked about. This is really old guard versus new guard. Rander has been, uh, has been really showing up to his competitions during his league. He made a resounding effort to make it in 2018, uh, and you know, single-handedly was uh, was an unstoppable force. Stron Riley, of course, the myth, the legend, the man, the winner of last year's NATC, the 2018 NATC. He's the guy to beat, and oh, sure. this is going to be a very interesting match. I'm, I'm really curious how it's going to shake out. He holds court. He holds the Wilson Cup. <laughs> I don't know if he wants to give it up just yet. Fair. Or ever, for that matter. <laughs> but we'll see how the day plays out. Lots of competition left as we take a look at our screen here, thanking our sponsors yet again. And you see their, you see their logos posted on our banners above the Huge targets thank here. You, obviously, to Firepower Capital has believed in in battle in the NATF and all of us for a long time. Uh, thank you for Bose keeping us from being thirsty. Cherry Street Barbecue, some of that delicious coleslaw might still be available. I Greater so. good, fantastic Toronto bar. We've got Fogler Rubinoff. Obviously a thank you to Gardner Roberts. And MNP, Fogler Rubinoff, Gardner Roberts, and MNP, longtime sponsors of the NATC. Thaf Harley Davidson, great partner, done many events with them. RBC, the Royal Bank of Canada, huge cash sponsor for Red Door Family Shelter. Uh, the Doc Ellis, Woodhouse Brewing. Woodhouse is a big one for us as well as they sponsor all of the Battle League nights. Yes, they do. As well as the National Axe Throwing Federation. So they're very, very active yes, in the Axe Throwing community. community. It's also worth noting Bose, which is one of our other yes, uh, other sure. sponsors, has been a sponsor of axe throwing since the very beginning. Right. Since the backyard days, they have uh, they have really put a lot of their their blood, sweat, and tears into helping us grow this sport. 
and everybody who's involved as a sponsor in the NATC. Just a huge thank you for your continued support. Providing that prize so the, money for today's event, providing all the food and beverages that we see in the building. Let's talk about that prize money just a little bit. And obviously, it's a $20, first thousand dollar pool. Twenty thousand dollar pool, which is really incredible. No slut. As you see, first place taking home ten thousand dollars. Second place will walk away with thirty five hundred. Third place will go home with two thousand dollars today. Which is that's no chump change. No, no, that's <laughs> good night at the bar. Absolutely. <laughs> As we move into the next page and seeing that even fourth place walks away with a thousand, fifth and sixth will take home 750, seven and eight will go home with $500 each, and nine through 12, as we just saw, the number nines finishing off will go home with $350 today. As we are waiting on a match finishing up on the far side between Spenny and Lachance, they are tied 2 2 in round number five. Currently on the final axe, tied at 20. Clutch hit by Spenny. Clutch hit by Lachance, and we will head to Big Axe to decide the final of this one. All the noise you were hearing when you were watching Max and Sinawiki throw was uh, Spenny and Lachance going to Big Axe, hitting Big Axe clutches, and just really showing out for the crowd. We're going to see what they've got right now. I expect more of the same. Spenny's up first with a three. Three from Spenny. Bullseye with chance will take this and he'll be moving on. And there That's it is. It. Lachance stays alive. Spenny will also fall into the bracket of tied for ninth place. Ending his day here. But a great day nonetheless. Walking home with $350 today, so that's... That'll cover my bar tab. I'll know who to ask. Cover his travel, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and we see here, where does he Who do we got up? coming up next, Tom? So we'll be waiting on the Strawn Riley and Kwai Rander. The Kuya Rander, sorry, pardon me. Rander Marquez. And then we got Stefan Herta and Julio Romero. With Huli, or no, Strawn Riley will get to decide which whether he plays on the left or the right hand side here, as the top seeded player in each set of four gets to choose whether you play on the left or right hand side of an arena. They make that call, and then from there it's rock paper scissors to decide if you're throwing on the left or right hand side of that lane. A lot of love here from two former champions. We've got Strawn Riley and Stefan sharing a hug, and here we go. I think we're just trying the to round up just there's getting Rander coming here. in. There's As always a little bit it's just Sorry, a little bit of ahead. negotiation, I was gonna yeah. say. Always a little bit of looking at the targets, seeing how the clutches look, seeing how right. the bullseyes have held up, gauging which side you feel comfortable on. Some people are a little superstitious, yeah. they want to start yeah. on uh, you know their preferred side. Some people don't care. A little bit of rock, paper, scissors, maybe if there's some negotiation in place, yeah. and then we're gonna get started. Yeah, and you uh as well, like you have to, you have to be watching the matches that are going before you. See, see what the wood's been doing. See, right. see how the clutches have been. If they've been soft or hard or whatever, because you can't, you can't go in there and start chopping at them with your axe. Right. You have to go based on, based on luck, based on what you've seen in previous matches, and just hope for the best. Yeah, you got to know the field conditions sometimes before you yep. get onto, the, get onto what's going on. It's a the great moment. Competitors oh. share a hug here and a laugh. I love it. <laughs> before they get started here. <laughs> Here we are. So we looks like we'll have Strong Sean Rander. Riley and Kuya Rander. Let's look at the rankings here. Strong Riley is the first overall seed, being last year's defending champion. Kwai is the fourth ranked player coming into today. Julio Romero is the third rank, so we have one, three, and four still alive. Wow. And Stefan Herta was the 26th, but a defend or a former champion. Right. He knows so what it no takes. Slows. The guy can uh, can really keep it together psychologically through the last few rounds. And that is such a big part of this game 
is a little bit of the mental aspect. Yeah. There's a little bit of mental gamesmanship about pushing the pace of how fast you're flowing, slowing things down in case you need a breather, even alternating between paces in order to keep your yeah. opponent on their toes. Uh, you'll get to see it a little bit, and we'll try to point it out when we see it in these matches. I know that Rander tends to push the pace. Strawn is a thrower who definitely likes to take his time. Kind of squaring off right now. Squaring off for the rock, paper, scissors. It is best two out of three. They're deciding how they will <laughs> shoot. Oh, and Rander takes it. So he gets to pick left to right and decides to have a look. Like I said, he's taking a look at the playing field. He's seeing what the, uh, what the targets look like. I'm assuming he'll go right. Oh, no, he's sticking he's left. Switching sides, so he'll come over to the left-hand side. So Kuya Rander is wearing the white T-shirt. He has chosen the left-hand side. And our defending champion, Strawn Riley, the number one seed coming into the day of 192 people, will be on your right. Lots of love between these two competitors. No strangers. I'm sure they've played each other for fun more than once. <laughs> As they start off with double bowls. Rander does have a bit of that interesting release. Mm -hmm. Starts part way up his axe. Almost halfway up his axe right. with his hold and just a very gentle little It's what's referred to through. as the Canadian pinch. Right. Canadian pinch. <laughs> Something that uh, has been refined a little bit. It was popularized when Strawn won last year. A little bit of a, a three-finger hold. And it, it works for him quite well. Absolutely. Like what, basically what it does is it provides you control over the axe yeah. without interference from a couple other fingers. It gives you a little bit of finesse. Uh, the downfall can sometimes, you know, the, the bonus is sometimes accuracy. The downfall can often be power on new boards, right? Yeah. right? New boards are naturally a little bit of a harder stick. Yeah. Uh, and you've got to watch yourself and make sure that your motion is perfect every time. Yeah. If you're a perfectionist, it's great. Which a lot of these players <laughs> are, so. <laughs> I know it's something coming from Strawn. You know, he's a, he's a player that has taped himself throwing so many times. He watches film on himself to make sure that, uh, you know, he's always staying up on his mechanics. Here we go, Big X. You've got two players went 27 in a heartbeat went 27. As we head to Big X here in round number one, tied at 27, Strawn to throw first. And he goes bullseye. Bullseye. So. Just remember that Big X is sudden death, yes. which means Rander needs to hit a bullseye. Just to continue. And it's close. It is close. It's going to need a device. They're going to have a look. If these two competitors can decide oh, and they Strong do, they gives agree. It to him. They agree. So it's, clutches are now live. Both players, as Ian just stated, have to hit their bullseyes first. Once that has been accomplished by both competitors, then they can call for clutch, but only in the big axe. Is that a factor? And strong. Wow. Right down the middle. That's about as perfect as you can get. Yep. A little 27-12 right there. You've got 27 with a regular axe. You've got 12 points off the bat with your big axe. You can't get better than that in competition. Nope. At least not yet, anyway. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> As Rander has to adjust his footing here. We, we go through the lines here in a little bit just to give you a, a gauge of what's happening there. As Rander is low and outside, so you've got the three lines. We have the red line at the front there. You have the black line in the middle and the blue line at the back. The red line with the standard hatchet is the fault line. Yeah, the and you, standard can't, hatchet. you can step on it, but you right. can't pass it. And the black line, you must start your throw with the standard hatchet with one foot behind the line. At least one foot, yes, yes. all the way behind the line. Before you start your throwing motion, and then you have to wait until both axes have gone forward, landed, or fallen on the floor, whatever the case may be. With these two, it's bullseyes. But both players have to make that conscious pause before crossing that red line. 
So and I then wonder, everything I, gets sorry, and just to finish off here, everything gets shifted back a line as we move into big X. So the blue line becomes the black yeah. line. Right now, Rander might have a three here. They're going to device it. This is going to be tough as Whittle comes out to measure. And the black line for Big X becomes the fault line. As Whittle's out to measure this one, we're on axe number two here, is round number two. Strawn, in super perfect fashion, took round number one. Is there anything better than super perfect? Because he went <laughs> ultra perfect there. Ultra perfect <laughs> right there? Big Axe perfection, as you mentioned. Oh, that one's low. That one's and definitely wide. a three. To the left side and the three points, giving Strawn a two point lead here. This is where it's tough because, in all honesty, hitting a three early on in your five throw round can sometimes just be demoralizing yep. against somebody in the top end of the competition. You know they're going to go for 27. Yep. You know they're going to go for that clutch at the end to close it out. You don't even have a chance to try to get yourself back in the right. competition. You just got to, this is where the mental side of the game comes in, just the, the mental strength and ability to just move on throw to yep. throw. This round might be done because Drawn hits a clutch. Yep. Now you just got to shake that off and move on to the next one. As Julio and Stefan are in one on the far side, Julio leading two to nothing, and both players have gone super perfect on that side as well. But we stay focused here on Kuya Rander and Strawn Riley. Kuya currently sitting on the left side. Take a little water right. break. As we take a look at the scores here. Two 27s for Strawn. Let's see if he can make this a sweep. I have a feeling that Rander is going to start to bring the heat here. It's hard against somebody like Strawn. You yeah. know, you're, well, you're, you know, you got to beat a robot. Yeah. He's an axe throwing <laughs> robot. And you've seen it so far in this one, well, through the whole day and through the fact that he's the champion from last year. Like, it's just, the consistency is just through the roof. Absolutely. As we're tied again for both players, really, though, like Kuya has missed one throw, but it's cost him because Strawn went for his clutch and got it. Right. And he didn't get to throw that final throw in the second round. Like overtime in a football game. Yep. If, the first, if the first quarterback gets it and scores a touchdown, it's over. Yep. You know? we saw that this year with the Pats <laughs> and the Chiefs. Like <laughs> Going upstairs for clutches. Strawn hits. Rander hits. And, and they're going to Big Axe. Headed to Big Axe. Tied at 27. Strawn with a win here. We'll take a three to nothing lead. And we'll take the match as it is best three out of five still. But a bullseye from Rander puts on the pressure. So Strawn has to at least hit a five here to continue. Anything less, Rander stays alive in the match. And a bullseye, and we continue on. So now clutches can be called by either player here. As Rander sets himself up. They're going upstairs. Clutches have been called. Big axe clutch party, here we go. And That's he gets good. it. So Strawn will have to match here to keep the round going. Two very different grips on these big axes. Rander doing a side thumb to the side, basically, uh, emulating a one-handed throw. And Strawn is there with a yell. Strawn doing more hand over hand, which is a bit more of a traditional throw. Yeah. It, you generally see that kind of baseball baseball bat style for the big axe. But yes, Rander holding it more like you would if you were throwing two-handed with the sm standard hatchet. This is the window. If Strawn hits this, this clutch, he moves on. He does move on to the final, the A final. And he gets it. Wow. Big axe clutch. And we're going to take it down to Matt Red Moreland for an interview here momentarily. But what a moment there as Strong gives a shake to the crowd. And here's Matt and Strong now 
to relive that moment. Okay, so I'm here with Strawn Riley. How you feeling, buddy? I'm feeling all right, man. I'm feeling all right. We still got lots to go. We got a lot of games to go, so gotta keep it rolling. Yeah. Yeah, how's the night been for you so far? Like, what are you feeling about how you've done so far, how the competition's been, where are you at? I'm good, man. Uh, love the atmosphere, honestly. If the camera would pan back there, see all these people here, it's pretty crazy. Take a peek at that shirt right there. Come on now. <laughs> okay, back to you, Tom. Oh, thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Great interview there. Did you see the T-shirts that have been floating around the crowd? There, you can see several as I'm joined now by Matt Wilson, the commissioner of the National Axe Throwing Federation. Welcome, Matt. Hey, Good Tom. to have you aboard. Thanks, buddy. This is wild, man. Oh. This is wild. I just finally had a second to, to, breathe. to soak it up <laughs> as I was standing by to come and join you, and I was just like looking over this crowd like, it's this is ridiculous. Else. This as is I, ridiculous. As you take yeah. a look here as well, like you can see the row of just Strawn Riley. <laughs> fan club here. <laughs> yes, John Riley just took that win. That's what I just came into, right? Yep, yep. You Big just walked match. in. Big axe clutch to take it from Rander. So Rander stays alive, though. He does get bumped down to the B bracket. Okay, so did so Strawn take it in the Big Axe Clutch? Yep. Okay, Strawn so, took it so Rander's in the B bracket now. If we recall, that's how he won the championship last that's year with the Big great. Axe Clutch. Big moves. And now the whole game has changed, because now if you don't have a solid Big Axe Clutch game, uh, you're not going very far in this nope. tournament. Well, and we just saw <laughs> Strawn do it twice. He threw, as Ian, Bobby, and I were calling it ultra perfect because he went perfect through the, super perfect through the small, hitting his four bowls in a clutch, and then went bowl and clutch to finish off That's with amazing. the big axe. And for anybody watching, the super perfect, what we mean by that is a perfect match back in the day before we had the clutch was five bullseyes in a row, equaling 25. Then we added the clutch worth seven to sort of create that Hail Mary moment to get back in yep. the game, which was much less commonly successful back then. Yeah. And we had what we call now like the super supernatural perfect game or the supernatural perfect match, which is when you score some 27s where you go four bullseyes and a, and a clutch. And uh, that over the last two years has been incredibly yeah. popularized. Everybody's hitting that supernatural perfect match of 81, which is the highest you can do. Four bullseyes, clutch, four bullseyes, clutch. Four bullseyes clutch. Well, when did we get the first the first 81 that was ever thrown was back in 2015 or so. I want to say 2014, maybe. 2014, yeah. It was John Matthews. It was 2014, 2015, around that time, I believe, uh, when we were in the Sterling Road location in Toronto yeah. West, which is our first indoor location for battle. And uh, and yeah, it was about a year before anyone hit another one. He he, he did the, broke broke that. Uh, hit that milestone and then it took a while for anyone else to do it and you know Stefan Herda was shortly after him and a handful of others but really the last two years since the last since the first NATC yeah. is really when everyone saw the level of competition and every yes. just, everyone just went back to their home venue and went all right let's raise the game like, and this and is and it. now now you see competitors like I know Big Will mentioned and we looked at his stats yesterday he's he may join us here later on, but he's got over 140 of the 80 super perfects now. 81s, he has over 140. Over 140. Oh my goodness. Like, that's, that's insane. Crazy. And and not only the you on the live stream can't see right now, but Stefan and Julio are having oh, a are huge match. With that one there. Oh yeah, there we go. So Great. looking at the score here, just to get you caught up here, it's two to one for Julio Romero. They are in round number four. Both players have hit their big axe bullseyes, and both players have hit a big axe clutch. Julio then, with a chance to win it here as Stefan just missed his big axe clutch. Oh, oh, he missed. It's closed. Just but to the just left. Wide. All right, Stefan's pretty fired up. He's, he's got another chance here. That he one stays. stays. Alive. <laughs> that one stays. That's tough for Julio. He's put me out <laughs> a couple years ago with one of those. So yeah. He's, I have never, he's good at it and he knows what he's doing when he throws that big axe, but tough have, one there. I've never played Julio. I'm not at that caliber, <laughs> and I'm okay to admit that. It's okay, but hey. <laughs> I'm not good enough to play I wasn't this there tournament. this year either, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we can just shake hands and be okay yeah, with that? Yeah. We're good with that. We're not we're good, good enough that. throwers to be in this tournament. <laughs> That's why we're doing commentary. That's right. <laughs> Big Will will be the only one in the commentary booth. Well, Big Will and Redbeard both, and Redbeard, both yeah. threw really well today in the tournament. They're both some of the best throwers out there as well. Uh, Big Will went real deep in the tournament, so we'll yeah, get his insights on it later. Yeah, he finished tied for 13th at the end of the day. Uh, that's so amazing. Just outside the money realm, but that's amazing. That's all right, too. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Estefan hits his big axe clutch again here. <laughs> Julio to match and stay alive. Estefan is fired up. Let's see what Julio can do here. Oh, and he gets, gets it. it. <laughs> Makes the correction necessary. 
and the crowd is losing their mind right now. <laughs> There's usually a chance of Julio to follow when he hits those, but the crowd being like respectful. The chance of Julio on the last one was because Stefan had missed, <laughs> That's true. missed his, so he had that chance to win it. He was just staying alive on that one. Yeah. Now he does have a two to one lead, so a loss here isn't the end of the match for him. He'll still have round five if it comes to that. That's but he has a chance to put oh, away. Yeah. But Stefan not making it easy here <laughs> as he aims to force round number five. Oh! And Julio, no <laughs> pressure. <laughs> This is too much. Man, the best, <laughs> the best throwing always at these tournaments, man. The NATC every year blows my mind. Not just in the uh, attendance and the participation level and the, and the community yeah. aspect, but like the competition just shoots through the roof every year we do this, oh, man. For sure. I, I don't even know what's gonna happen when people go home from this tournament and start, you know, that same slant of uh, the like angled rise of competition goes up. Yep. You know, we're, we're gonna have to see how the next year goes. It's really? gonna be wild. You see it, for, well, even from, as we were talking with Ian earlier, just how, how people have adapted and changed their throws based on what they see at oh this tournament. Oh, my God. Got it again. again. I think that's, that's three in a row. Three big axe clutches, big axe clutches in, in a row. row. And they both four hit, of five. Yeah, four <laughs> out of five for big axe clutches. This is ridiculous. Amazing. But Amazing yeah, stuff. Just from year to year, you see the success of people and how they throw, and then the next wave of people that have adjusted. Oh, okay. Stephen There's the miss. There. Just to do throw Julio's got a chance. Julio's got a chance to put this away. And the crowd chance. Stefan being the most decorated of these tournaments, he's won several. Ooh, oh, and he hits he the same spot. It. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan is fired up as he stays alive. As you see Julio gesturing at the target, going, how did I, how was I so far away? Yeah. <laughs> Great moment there. And you know, these two have played each other a ton of times. Uh, they've been at the top of the pack for a long time uh, in the battle community. And so they're having a blast with this matchup, bringing the best out of both of them. Right they share a kiss there just <laughs> before they move along. Great moment there between two competitors as they get ready to go here. All right. I believe they're both throwing in that uh, Mad Monday League that's going on at Villiers this season. That's right. One of the most competitive out there. He gets there it. There it is. Oh, man. Now going <laughs> six of eight in Big Axe Clutch for Stefan Herta. And oh Julio Gatches. <laughs> and we continue. <laughs> Tongues out, they're ready to go. It always takes it to the next what level. And, and, and we, as we see, Mike Kump, another one of the, of the favorites coming into the tournaments, just standing in front of the commentary booth here. He just looked back. Him and Redbird both just looked back to us. And they're just jaws are dropped, minds are blown. Oh, they yeah. can't believe what's going on. Uh, just uh, when you think it's done, they yeah. separate up and no pressure at all. They move <laughs> forward. <laughs> this is wild. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> as they share a drink. And away they go. Stefan to throw first. Ooh, it's tight, but it looks low from here. Stefan having a look, getting up to have a view. No we'll call I'm, for an official. Jonathan League. Out to have a look. Okay. Whether it's touching or not, this there? is going to be tight. Avery might there be in there. There it comes. Nope. It's no good. It's no Jonathan good. says no. No need. Here we go. For the referee here is Julio. Oh. Julio gets it, and Julio is moving on to the A final. To face Ron Riley. This place is losing it. <laughs> what a moment. What a match. What Amazing. a final round that was. Now that was still A bracket, right? That was still A bracket. So that sets the A final between Strawn Riley and Julio Romero. That's the A bracket final? That's the okay. A bracket final. So now we wait for the B. Okay. And what a great match. match.
I think we got uh, we have Redbeard standing by to talk. Redbeard and, and or Big Will standing by to talk to the winner. What a match. Oh, we're coming back. What a match. That was incredible. We'll go down to for an interview there in a moment. Um, but yeah. What that was more insane. can you ask for? That was insane. <laughs> and there was that like eight out of nine eight big ass clutches or something like that we for, for Julio. Was that how many they ended up at? That was nuts. I lost count. It was too many count. <laughs> <laughs> it just kept going. I feel like that's a record though. Like that's it's definitely a record for be big ass clutches in a single match. In a single match it's to keep be. rolling. <laughs> We'll find that out. And of course, the <laughs> first couple times when one missed, the other missed, and then they both dialed back in. That was pretty wild. Both of them super fired up. As that we, was as almost the craziest down. part of it all, is that like you, you get them just matching one, and then one misses and the other does, rather than closing it out and finishing it yeah, off. Like you just, absolutely. And hitting almost the same spot on the target. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one when Stefan missed first, and Julio yeah. hit the next one, almost in the same, the same, same miss. Same spot. <laughs> yeah. Great yep. match nonetheless, and Stefan still alive. We, we could see him yet as he moves off to the B bracket. Okay. So we've got strong Riley solo stats here coming up. Let's see, pop them up on the screen there. So you can see he's had high scores of 81. His average score is 73.7. He has 588 career wins. You can see his call rate there. The clutch call rate is how many times he chooses to call clutch when he can. So he's going for it 75% of the time, and he's got an 81% accuracy as well as a 90% accuracy on his bullseye. So Strawn's career stats are, are nothing short of astonishing. The guy's an animal. Uh, the last two years, he has been uh, right up there at the top of the pack, maybe. Yeah. And definitely last year. And we got Julio's stats coming up here in a moment. We'll take a look and see how they compare. Both of them obviously having hit high scores of 81. Averages, both of them over 70, uh, yeah. 70 for their average. And uh, similar call rate, but uh, you can see uh, Julio not quite having the same success rate with his clutches as uh, as Strawn is. And we're going to go down to uh, Big Will for a post-match interview after yeah. that. That'll be at the end of this match between Comp and who do we have here? Is that Rander? Kuya Rander. We got Comp and Rander getting set up. This will be back to our B bracket. Right. So we have, uh, taking a look here, Comp and Rander. And Stefan Herta and Lachance will play on the far side. Right. Still right. Stefan's uh, got to go again right away. Yep. No, it's right, right back to it. That's excuse me. the thing with the A and the B. You get right back into it. And B, you're just going from here on out. Yep. And this at this point streaming. in the tournament, too, there's uh, there's not many competitors left. So nope. once you get knocked out of A, you're going down here. So after these two face off, Okay, let's take, take a look, look at, at the B bracket, bracket here. Bringing it up. As you can see, we've got uh, the A bracket on the left, it looks like. Nope. Oh, no, sorry. This, this is, is all B bracket. Yep. This, this is our So we've got Stefan Herta and Lachance. Yep. So we'll have it. What do we have here? One, two, three, four matches left from the B, and then we'll have a final match for the A bracket, and then the championship final after that. So the A bracket, whoever wins between Strong, Strong Riley and Julio Romero, They'll get a bit of a break after that match as they wait for that B champion to come out. And then right. they will. And then the compete. loser of Romero and Strawn Riley will face off with the B bracket champion right. because, yeah. again, they have to lose twice to be out of there. Yeah. And then, and, then, uh, and then the winner of that will come back up to face whoever's undefeated in the A. And then that final matchup, the person in the A bracket does have to get beat in two full sets. Perfect. And here we go. We're kicking so off. So we've got Kump and we've got. Kuya Rander. Kuya is on your right, or pardon me, your left, and Kump is on the right. Double Kump. bullseyes to start. Kump in the burgundy hoodie, and Rander in the battle team in the white. Go to axe number two. Tied at 10 after two axes, double bulls again. And at this stage of the game, uh, you know, it's so hard to be so consistent with these bullseyes, especially when they're switching on that fifth throw in, into the clutch position, throwing in a different spot and then resetting and coming back to those yep. bullseyes. Uh, these guys make it look easy, but uh, it is a definite but. feat. Yeah, <laughs> to, to be this consistent. These, these, all, everyone that's competing at this point in the tournament are, uh, are masters of this sport. So we have come is the 104th seed coming into today. 
Kuya Rander was fourth overall coming into today. Rander was fourth overall. Rander was fourth overall coming in. I knew Rander was having a great year. I didn't realize he finished fourth. That's incredible. Now, Kump won one of the earlier tournaments this year for the NATF. That's right. So he's no slouch either. So his 104th, again, as I talked about with Ian Bobby earlier, for the, those watching, is an example of someone that is ranked probably a little lower than their actual skill level goes right. just based on how they finished in their in their home league. Right, and the home league does have a factor for sure, play a factor into things because you could be in an incredibly competitive league and top the top four from that league grouping are the ones that qualify based on champions points. So, so Kump may not have been able to sweep all of his leagues if he's playing in a very competitive league, which may not end him with the most champions points, but he still ends up qualifying. And so those ranks can be a little bit deceiving. Yeah, for sure. As Kump coming to us here today from Urban Axes in Philly, I believe, yes? That's right. I think Kump has thrown uh, all around the New Jersey and, uh, and Philly area, if I'm not mistaken, but I do believe that uh, Urban Axes in Philly is his home league. This is his home league. Yeah. And he did win that tournament at Chopper's Hatchet House back in yes. October, which was yeah. the Choptober Fest, the Choptober Challenge on Halloween. And uh, that was the first uh, NETF sanctioned tournament that had a, an American champion, which is which which super great exciting. For sport, right? Great for the sport, yeah. And uh, Cup and some of the other competitors actually put together an event uh, tied into this weekend that was a Canada versus U.S. That they yes. got a handful of the best from Canada and U.S. and had a great head-to-head uh, -head, uh, as a pre pre prelim, I guess. Pre tournament for tournament. <laughs> yeah, of, of skill events really because they were doing some some different throws that you you're not seeing today. They were doing some of the double rotations and things that um, and various other skill games that you don't see at a tournament like this, but just to get kind of warmed up and have a bit of fun and get that camaraderie going. Yep, it was a great time and a great warm up for uh, for the event here today. So Kuya took round number one in big axe, hitting his bullseye, Kump missed with a three. So Kuya leads one to nothing here. And that was with the big axe, correct? Yeah, yeah. that was with big axe in overtime as both players went 27 each in the first round. So to force that big axe. And just for everyone who's watching who may not know all of the ins and outs of the of the match format, any round where they tie their five throws with the hatchet, they have to have a tiebreaker with the big axe. And it's for points, and they have to hit a bullseye before they can call a clutch. Uh, but they settled it with the bullseye and yeah. three before it got to that point. And Rander takes a two to nothing lead here. In this, a best four out of seven. It is a best four out of seven. Rander leading two to nothing as he hits his clutch and Kump misses just wide. That's right. To the right hand side. And yeah, we are in four out of seven. So this is where we really start having some marathons of matches. Yeah. If we look to the far side as well. Lachance has a one to nothing lead on Stefan as they're heading into round number two now. It looks like they went to Big X also. As both players here, Kuya and Kump, are tied at five in round number three. Now tied at 10. Double bulls again, and we're tied at 15. Okay. This is interesting. I think uh, Kump stays pretty focused in this game, so I don't see him getting flustered down two games. But you pretty well have to be perfect at this Plenty point. Plenty of time. Like, you, you see it. We saw it earlier, like, both players go perfect and you have one that sweeps the match. But, like, in this situation, you, anybody can win. You got four, you go. four to get to it. Being down two, being down three isn't a big deal. You just got to focus on the next round and get through to it. And you'll hear that uh, as a mantra with a lot of the top competitors is they don't think about, try to just focus on yeah. the next act. Yeah. Just worry about that next bullseye or that next clutch and don't think too much about falling behind or not. It can change pretty quick. Stay out of your own head and stay focused, and away you go. As as Kump was just uh, talking to his big axe, just uh, letting it know that it's, it's time. Like Mark Andre <laughs> Fleury to his goalpost. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. And he whispers the right there sweet nothings go. to his axe. Whatever he said, it works. <laughs> he gets it. <laughs> that bullseye gets Kump around. And there we go. <laughs> Two to one now. Just like that. It's a match. Yeah. Right back into it. We head to round number four, two to one. Yeah. The Kuya Rander. Kuya will be on the right hand side, Kump on the right. Oh. On the left, sorry. 
Left and right. There we go. <laughs> the Kuya in the cup is, is getting to you. Yeah. Too many yeah. Ks. Remember, Rander in the white shirt. Rander and, uh, and Kump. Kump in the burgundy. the burgundy. And there we go. Double bowls from both. We go to the second act. Round number four now. And you can see these two having a little back and forth uh, between rounds there. They're both clearly having a great time. We've seen that quite a bit between the competitors so far. You saw it between Stefan and, and Julio in the last match that we just watched. You're seeing it here between these two. Just good friendships. Both wanting each other to do well, but both obviously wanting to win at the same time. Yeah. It's a tough balance. <laughs> yeah. Can't have both. No. <laughs> and here we go. So they're tied up after four bullseyes in this round. Tied um, at 20. They're definitely both going clutch. <clears throat> Clutch is hit by both, yeah. and we're going right back to Big Axe, tied at 27. No surprise there. I expect most of these rounds to go to Big Axe. Yeah. So far, we've had Kump miss one clutch, and that was it. And he's down two to one. Otherwise, yeah, all 27 to Big Axe has been the decider. There you go. We got some water dropped Thank off. You. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so, so a bullseye from Kump for this first big act, which is great. That means... And oh, Rander okay. is high. Look at that, just so like that. Tied at two. Two games apiece. Round number five of this best four out of seven. And on the other side, you can see Lachance actually just uh, hit himself a clutch with his big act as well. They are still in round number two. Oh, wow. At the moment. So they're having a great match over there, too. <laughs> Man, I'm loving this crowd. This is awesome. This is huge. Like they're What's packed up, in guy? like sardines. In <laughs> I'm just uh, randomly pointing and, uh, and waving to uh, people uh, in the crowd. Like, yeah. <laughs> Getting this some a, odd looks. It's a great view. <laughs> it's not bad. Right above the action here yep. at Battle Pickering. Yep. On the Orange Arena. And if, I don't know if you saw that exchange there, but you saw Kump look over at Rander's bullseye that was between two point values, and Kump yeah. giving the thumbs up to say, yep, yeah, I agree, that, that throw is good, that bullseye is, is good. That's, that's the great thing about this sport, is that it is semi-self-refereed. You can turn to your opponent as long as you both agree on that point value, then we move forward. You don't that's have right. to call for the device or anything that way, but that's if right. you need, the device is there and you bring it up. Yep. And these guys have thrown so much, yeah. they, they know what yeah. A majority in bullseye looks like, but uh, but they'll still call for that device every once in a while. Sure. Sometimes it can be a bit of a, a mental move as well. Yeah. Slow the pace down if somebody's picking their pace up too much or getting too hot. And there double we go. clutches again, and we head right back to Big Axe. Amazing. Both players have been super perfect through this match. Except for that one missed clutch in round number two by Kump. Everything else, 27s. And then uh, Big Axe has been the decider. At this point, you really need to have a solid big axe game to be able to compete at the highest level. And we see a three there from Rander, and that, that could, cost, could him. cost him dearly here. We'll see what happens. Pump, Pump took the chance to put it away here. His, his big axe game has been on point. He's won a couple with that bullseye already. And he dies Bang. right down the there middle there as he is. looks around the crowd. Money. That was money. Can't argue with that. No device. Nope. Not no device needed on that one. <laughs> I think he might have been able to paint the circle with that one and put it through the <laughs> screw hole. Right down the middle. And yeah. now has a three to two lead and a chance to close this one out and move along in the B bracket. Yeah. That's as I expected from Kump though. I mean, they're all yeah. very focused. Oh, my mom just showed up. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh, she's too tiny to be seeing over people in the crowd over there, but <laughs> figure it out. That's awesome. It's great to see them here. But uh, as I said early on in this match, when Cup was down by yeah. two, you know, I, I don't expect any of these uh, any of these competitors at this level to get flustered by by being down a round or two. And here we yeah, are, sure. back to three two in favor of Cup now. And still anyone's match as we're tied at ten here, yeah. third act of round number six. If Cup wins this one, this round, that will be the match. And this is the B bracket. This so is the B bracket. So whoever Kuya loses will be here, finished. That's right. Now, it won't all be sad. He will walk away with a bit of the prize money from today. Mm -hmm. A bit of that $20,000 pot. 
That's right. This, we're all in the money at this point. So everybody's walking home yep. with something at everybody's this point. Everybody's walking home with something, which is great. Thanks to our wonderful sponsors, as you see them up on the banners above the targets there. We'll be making sure to share those, uh, those sponsor uh, names with you later on in the program as well. And right on. like clockwork, we're headed back to Big Axe, tied at 27. Yeah, we absolutely wouldn't be here without all of the amazing sponsors that get involved. Uh, you know, at the top, from the people that are here right now, Bait Shop doing screen printing t-shirts for everyone. That's uh, right there. Uh, Cherry up, Street right. Barbecue feeding everybody. Bose, Woodhouse, Neutral, uh, Pelletier Wines, all supplying uh, some of the libations for the spectators and some for the competitors as well. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a great day. They really great make day. it possible. So here we go. Let's see what Kump can do with his first big axe. So a win here for Kump. Oh, it's oh, a, a three. three. So Kuya can stay alive and force round seven here with oh, a bullseye. That's spicy. <laughs> it's a spicy move. <laughs> Where's Pascal Siakam when you need him? I know, right? <laughs> spicy Pete. And oh, he does. We're going to round yeah. seven. And just like okay. the round before, Kuya goes right through the screw hole in the middle of the bullseye. And we call this uh, the rubber match. When it comes down to the final round of the match, and that's the deciding round, we call that the rubber match. Whoever wins this one is going to take it. And uh, this this is as expected. What a great uh, great showdown. Now we are, we're headed into round seven here on the our side. On the far side, they are in big axe and still in round three. <laughs> Man, they have been going at big axe for ages on every round over there. Where we've been settling these rounds with the, usually with the bullseye. Yeah, yeah. They to the haven't clutch. had to go clutch just yet with these two. Yep. But we start off with double bulls here, as I expect us to head back to Big Axe here in round seven. But we will see how these final four throws pan out. And they start double bulls into the final three. And that is a, a minor rule change that happened in 2018 in regards to Big Axe. Yep. After last year's tournament, where Stefan won two, the final two rounds with his Big Axe clutch. We saw a whole lot of big axe clutch happening in league, and uh, and so we ended up we modified a rule a little bit to do that, so that the first throw of big axe you have to hit a bullseye in order to go for that clutch. You sort of have to unlock the clutch before you go for it. So that's right. It's been really cool to see that dynamic of that new rule. And here comes our tonight. final clutch party of this round, tied at 20. And they we're going both got it. back. To Big X, we think the top um, might be out. Ah, shrugging with his good. hands up. Kuya says yes. Yeah, Randall shakes Little his head. He's like shaking there. his head, going, "It's good." <laughs> uh, I really wish it wasn't, <laughs> but it's good. Both were close <laughs> there. They both kind of had that top tilt out. But regardless, we go to Big X for round seven. And Kuya right down the middle. So pump with the bullseye. We continue. Anything less, and Kuya moves on. Cool. And he's oh. right down the middle. And they are excited because they finally unlocked the clutch that you were just <laughs> speaking of, Matt. Yeah, hey. there we go. <laughs> and there we go. And we're set and ready to go. Kuya to throw first. Clutches have been called. As Matt Widow scoring the match is having a laugh with the competitors. I think they've both been a little frustrated with uh, not hitting those bulls right away. To to it, yeah. And they both uh, lost a round or two hitting that three with that big X. So it's nice to be in the clutch game. Ooh, oh, just okay. low. Kump has the right opportunity. Kump has shown a little bit of his personality here. Very animated at times. Yeah. Kump's great. If you get a chance, check out his photos when he wins uh, yeah. tournaments in league and stuff. He's, uh, he's always got the best pose in front of the target, there's no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> well, we're going we to need a award for that soon. <laughs> best, best championship pose. Oh, and he's okay. wide of the left side clutch. Renner wasn't even looking, but you can tell from the crowd, it's not over. He grabs his axe to get set up. And here he goes. Oh, he's asking the crowd what he should do. He wants some feedback. They're not giving him any, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody's just assuming you that go for going. clutch. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's next, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. but he misses that right side again. Oh, nice. 
clutch call Sorry, by I keep Kump. getting in your way there, Tom, because I can't help leaning no, forward no, you're and getting, getting, my, you're getting my view. This this perch that we're in up here is just perfect. I can see past you. I can see. Yeah, I'm trying to stay real professional in my comment, <laughs> but I can't help it. The excitement's too much. Right? Just like, you just want to look in. <laughs> want to climb over the wall. <laughs> and here we are. And he does it, Come. Comes from behind oh. after falling down two to nothing early in this one. Claws his way back to take it in seven rounds <laughs> with a big axe clutch as the USA chance roll through the crowd. Yep, absolutely. What a throw there as Kump moves on. And we got Big Will down on the floor. He's going to talk to both of the competitors after that amazing match. And he tearing it down to Big Will. All right, we have Rander here. Amazing performance today. I'm kind of curious to know why you were calling out for Julio there when you're going to that clutch. He's basically he's basically like my mentor, so every time I ask him for advice, he's usually there for me. So. Well, you did an amazing performance today. Be proud of yourself. We're all proud of you. Excellent job. We got Mr. Kump here, down too early. Yeah. Come back to fight your way through that. What were you thinking? What was your strategy today? You know, strategy today, not have any idea what's happening at any point in the match. If somebody says the last axe, I go clutch. If it's not, I go bull. And just uh, see what happens. Well, again, amazing performance. Way to stay in that. Fight your way back from two down. Excellent job. Back to you guys. Thank you, Big Will. What a great moment that was, and what a great answer to that question you had for Kump. He just, you can see his personality coming out in that answer. As I'm joined now by Matt Red Moreland. Red, Good to see great you, to have you out. Yeah, thanks, thanks for joining so us here. What are your thoughts on the afternoon so far? Uh, I mean, for the Americans, Kump is a huge favorite right now, so him still being in the tournament is huge. Uh, I saw him at Shoptober, and he, he's, so he, I don't know if people know this, but he uh, is the first American that has ever with the crowd this Of course, big. yeah. So he was, he was the first American champ for a, a major tournament. And uh, seeing him here still staying in the tournament is super exciting. I know all the Americans here are very excited yeah. about that. Well, so. you heard it after the win, the chance of USA yeah. rolling through the crowd. And that's that's a consistent thing. I don't know if we have a Canadian equivalent for the USA USA chant, but uh, I mean, I know it doesn't roll off the tongue it quite as well, quite, but no. it's still that chant of Canada yeah. is great. So, as we take a look here at the B bracket just down below. Yeah, of course. Well, on your screen, folks, but down below for us. And who is left? As we're still watching on the far side, Stefan Herta and Lachance, as they are currently sitting in round number six, but Kump moves on to the B semifinal, as it would be called, and he will face the winner of this match between Stefan Herta and Lachance. So, uh, I believe I believe Stefan Herta and uh, Lachance is a B bracket match. Yeah, well, now. no, all of these are B bracket at this point. Um, so a loss there. Oh, he as would we, he would face the champ. Yeah, of yeah, course. yeah, for yeah. sure. They move on to face the next round. So but as we take a look and thank our sponsors here this afternoon, um, we're going to take a look at the prize money here. It's a twenty thousand dollar pool, as mentioned earlier. But first place of today's tournament will take home ten thousand dollars, half of that twenty thousand dollar pot. Second place will walk away with thirty five hundred. Third place, no chump change, two thousand bucks going home in their pockets as we move on to the next set. And that's where we're headed now. Fourth place gets 1,000. Fifth and sixth will walk away with 750. Seven and eight will take home 500 each. And nine through 12 walk away with 350. We are down into the final six at this point. So from here on out, you're walking away with at least $750. That's a, that is a crazy thing to think about. So for, for I mean, watching this, this B-bracket match right now, so I, so we're gonna we're gonna roll our sponsors here, but you're gonna see the video of the of this other B match between the Chance and Stefan. But we're just gonna let our uh, sponsors roll. And again, thank you to all of our sponsors as they come up on the screen here. Without them, we wouldn't be here today. But we thank them greatly for all their support. Uh, it, speaking to this this B bracket match though between Lachance and uh, Stefan, yeah. that for me watching this is a pretty amazing thing to watch because our our Monday night league in Toronto they're both in the same league on Monday oh, nights. Oh, that's right as so, well. So these are two guys that we get to see week after week, throwing together and hanging out, having a good time. So to see them both this far in the tournament throwing against each other is a pretty amazing thing, knowing that 
you know, even, even if you lose, your friend still wins. So this is a big chance for LaChance here. They are currently in round number seven. It is tied 3-3. Three, three. LaShawn takes it, it. LaShawn has knocked out Stefan Herta. Stefan took, Stefan, pardon me, took the risk of throwing clutch on that final axe. He was up by two. He took the chance of going for clutch, which he's hit all day. He missed just slightly down to the side, leaving it open for LaShawn. All he needed was a three or better. He hits his bullseye, and LaChance moves on. This is a crazy, crazy accomplishment for LaChance right now because, I mean, everyone else in the tournament right now are huge names in axe throwing. They're people that are showing up top three, top five in all of our major tournament circuits. But LaChance is a very, very, very good thrower, but he is not somebody that's going on the tournament right. circuit. He's not out here making a name for himself, to all, especially all these people coming from so far away. I'm sure not a whole lot of people know this guy. I'm really, really happy to see him this far in the tournament, and his throwing today has just been lights out. Oh, it's, it's been great, as you just saw in that one, like taking Stefan, a former champion, a former champion to seven games and then knocking him out of the tournament now. Yeah. Stefan and Kuya Rander finished tied for fifth place at this point. So they will walk away with some of that prize money that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Just, and I mean, again, so spe speaking about that league again, Rander, LaChance, Stefan are all in the same league. So I, I want to maybe address the fact that the quality of leagues kind of breed yeah. the quality of players. Yep. And, and I find that across the whole NATF is in some of the newer venues, maybe your best person has a 60 average, which is is a very very good score yes. right but these if you're constantly trying to beat somebody who's got a 60 average that's right. kind of what you're shooting for right with the case of these guys they're all throwing perfect matches night after night after night and since they're all playing other people that are all throwing perfect yep. matches consistently that's kind of where you get a place where you're breeding this incredible talent where you know three out of the top six are all in the same Monday Night League in Toronto, yep. so that's huge. And we we spoke to that earlier. Some of the rankings are skewed because of stuff like that. So you get a Kump that is 106. You get right a Stefan Herta, who's a former champion that's ranked 26. Right, and just varying differences, but all very strong players. Yeah, as and we get ready here for the championship of a bracket this is the a bracket championship the winner of this will move on to the championship final this is between julio romero and Str the defending champion strong riley strong riley as they finish up the rock paper scissors to choose the sides strong will be on the left it looks like and julio romero will be on the right just to speak to stats for a second here Strong Riley was kind of somebody that really changed the axe throwing game. So we, on axescores.com, if you guys look up the website, you can check out the kind of stats and records that we have on that website. And at the beginning of this year, I believe almost every single one of those records was set by Strong Riley. Yeah. This guy really changed the face of axe throwing. But every, almost every single person you're seeing in these final matches are people that have either taken those records away from him or are people that are in the middle of beating yeah. them in their current season that they're playing right now. Yeah, for sure. And so that is something we haven't mentioned today. If you do want to check out all the stats and scores from today's event or from, from leagues across the National Axe Throwing Federation, visit axscores.com. That's axe with an E, scores.com nice. for all of the details and all of the stats that you can see in that is being mentioned by Red here. As we're wrapping up round number one, tied at 20, double clutch is called. Julio looks like he's low. Strawn is good. Good on both. And there agreed upon are. by Julio. And Strawn takes a one to nothing lead here in the A final. And they will hold for a brief second. And we will head to round number two. Strawn Riley takes a one to nothing lead. Now it is a best four out of seven here, so it's this is a long haul. It is. As we yeah. just saw, we had Kump down two to nothing. And he worked his way back, clawed his way back into round seven. And 
ultimately took it and moved on to the B. I mean, speaking to Kump again for a moment, I think clawing his way back is is one way to to look at it. But I mean, I don't know if you spoke about this before, but he started throwing in March of this year. Right. Yep. So to him, even being here at all is an amazing feat. But he has been dominating all day, just consistent, consistent, consistent. And I don't think anyone is is amazed that he's made it this far. But I think we're all really, really excited to see where he's going to go as the rookie amongst the group. So as we continue here in round number two between Julio and Strawn, Julio is on the le left hand side. I'll get my left and rights figured out here at some point, ladies and gentlemen. But Julio is on the left, Strawn is on your right, and we're heading to the final axe, tied at 20 yet again. Double clutch is called, Julio trying to recalibrate and find that clutch, but he missed in round one. Strawn hits, Julio hits, and we go to big axe. Now, they may rock, paper, scissor, it's the first time to decide who will throw first for big axe, and then I would suspect that they'll rotate from there. And that seems to be the discussion right now. It's a rock, paper, scissors. Oh. And it looks like Sean Riley is going first. So a big moment here as he gets to lead off. Now. And it's a bullseye from Strawn. So Julio will need to hit a bullseye to continue this round. Anything less, Strawn will take a two to nothing lead. But he oh, hits, and now clutches are alive if they want them now. So we're gonna see if they're gonna make that agreement. We're both going clutches here. So I just wanna speak to maybe the, the sportsmanship quality of the right. game. Yep. The, the clutches aren't a mandatory at this point, but mm -hmm. they have both elected to go clutch together. Since one person throws first, it's it's kind of a gentleman's move to both call clutch at the same time, even though the second person doesn't have to. Like, within the rules, Julio could throw a bullseye right now and take the round, but because we made that call earlier, we're gonna stick with the clutches and we're gonna see where this goes. And he hits it, and Julio has tied the match. Taking advantage of a missed clutch, Julio steps up and ties the match one to one here in this best four out of seven of the A final. I have to say the crowd here today is really loving Julio. I, I mean, he's one of the nicest guys in axe throwing and I, I'm always happy to see him when I get to the tournaments and when I, when I meet up with him at, at different events or league nights or whatever, but the crowd here is going crazy. Every time he hits a clutch, every time he goes to big axe, he's just firing everybody up. He I was introduced to Julio, I believe, two, maybe three years ago at the National Axe Throwing Federation Championship. Pardon me, the National Axe Throwing Championship two or three years ago. Yeah. And he's been a fan favorite ever since. Oh, of course. <laughs> just a great individual, as all of these competitors are. They're just good people to start, as you can see it, as they interact with each other. Well, in think, such a friendly manner. I think at this point we're we're kind of down to a lot of fan favorites. It's, I mean, Strawn is is the person that a lot of people are expecting to turn out the championship you see tonight. The super Strawn T-shirts smeared yeah, the across crowd. the crowd. Yeah, and as we head to the final acts of round three, tied at 20, double clutch is called. And double clutch is hit. We're going back to big acts. Unbelievable. The consistency of both of these throwers is just amazing. Like the, so the perfect score that you can possibly throw yeah. in, in, a, in a league night match is, is 81 points. And so Strawn has the highest record ever with an 80 point average on a season. And that's over 24 matches across. That's pretty insane. That's just unbelievable. I believe he missed three times on the whole season. That's over two months he missed three times. In 28 matches, he missed three throws. Three throws. It's, that is something else. Yeah. So, but Julio's right up there. I believe Julio's highest stat, we're looking at around a 78-79 average on a season. So these guys are just neck and neck. Well, and I, 
Sorry to interrupt no, you there. As Julio, we just uh, we got talking because we were so excited about the competition here between these two. Julio just took round three in Big Axe. So we're going to head to round number four. Julio leading two to one. Now, a loss in this match doesn't mean your day is done. You have to lose twice. You'll get bumped to the B bracket. But it's no easy climb as we see the far side there between Lachance and Kump moving along. And in this one, we're tied 5-5 in round number four. And I mean, with that big X win for Julio, I, Julio's a very, very good thrower, but his his big X game is just unbelievable. He, uh, he really, really shines when he gets into big X, so I think every time one of these rounds ties and he gets to throw big X, he's right in the pocket, and he's just yep. loving that opportunity. Yep. And to speak to the growth of the sport, Two years ago, I finished fifth place in this tournament, losing to Julio on a big X clutch. That's ending Sounds fifth. about right. And now here I am up top with you. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> Just how much this sport has grown as Julio gives us a wave there, leading two to one. We're both hitting clutches. We're going to big X again. Right back to it. I have a feeling this is going to be a consistent theme for the rest of the evening. Yes, I, I, I don't. I don't see any match going less than seven rounds. Yeah. <laughs> and less than seven rounds of big end. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much the level of competition we've gotten to. Mind and you, we've got six in this one at least. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean the, the kind of unbelievable quality of this is where you're seeing these scores on your screen. We're, we're throwing 27s on the hatchet rounds. You're getting the additional points for the big axe, but most people, it'll take them oh, Julio's high. It'll take them months, if not at, within their first year, maybe past it, to hit their first 27, to hit all four bullseyes, and then yeah. that clutch is quite an accomplishment for a lot of people. So for these guys to go five, 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 seven Every all time. night <laughs> is just an unbelievable accomplishment. Hundred percent. And we are now tied two two, heading into round number five of the A bracket championship between Strawn Riley on your left, Julio Romero on your right. And double bulls there. And they're so clean. That's that's the thing that I think uh, we're gonna see here at the, the end of this tournament now. I mean, we've come down from 192 competitors on the day, and these bullseyes are generally gonna be right inside that black circle, yeah. which is an accomplishment in itself. In itself, to have zero paint on either side of that yeah. act. So no need for the device at any point. Yeah, and that, that's the thing with our, our majority rules is we're, we're always throwing for that, that bullseye, but as long as the majority of the blade is inside that black paint, we're gonna call that a bullseye. Yeah. So if when we're seeing people that are just consistently throwing all within that bullseye, barely ever touching the paint, is a pretty amazing accomplishment in itself. For but sure. to see it over and over and over and over again is just crazy. And we are tied yet again at 27 here in round number five, and we'll go right back to Big Axe. Julio to throw first. He'll step up to set the point, hoping for a bullseye here. I say hoping, but chances are he's gonna get it. <laughs> And he does. Bowl, a now Strong bullseye. must hit a bullseye to continue the round. As he sets himself up. And oh, drops. Oh, oh, tough wow. break. It was going to be a three anyway. He was high and outside. Wow. It that, looked like and hit that knot. That is exceptionally uncharacteristic of anyone in this in this tournament. At this point, this point. Yeah, for sure. But for Sean Riley, it's 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 a big big change. So I would be watching for Julio to kind of ride this wave now and and take the confidence from that drop right. and just keep pushing and pushing and trying to take this win. Definitely. definitely. As we are now at a three to two lead for Julio Romero with an opportunity to knock Strawn Riley, the defending champion, into the B bracket. The, the funny I'm thing about that opportunity, though, is Strawn Riley did become the champion from, from the B, B bracket. You're right. So, yeah. I, I mean, as much as, as a win over Strawn Riley is an incredible accomplishment in itself, he is not done yet. 
So if this is something that's taken by Julio, I would not be surprised if he ended up facing Strong Riley in that final match. For sure, in a rematch. But I'm sure the two competitors on our far side in the B final at the moment, or in the B semifinal, Lachance and Kemp would have something to say about that. It's, it's As they are currently at a two to one Lachance lead in round number four on the far side. An incredible accomplishment for Lachance. He's been just on fire all night. So for him to still be in this and throwing against the first American tournament champion is huge. You're probably seeing the hands going up, seeing the crowd getting excited, and that's because we're on a Big Axe match on that b -brand. And we got another double clutch. Of course we do. Big Axe here in the A final. Strong to throw first. So just to clarify here, if, uh, if Julio does take this round of Big X, that's the match. Yes. So yeah. this is this is a chance for Julio yeah. to win the match. Strong's really got to close on this one to stay in it. And he starts this off with a bullseye, putting the pressure on Julio to at least hit that bullseye to continue the, pardon me, continue the round. Keep wanting to say match, but we're not there yet. I mean, you would still be <laughs> continuing the match. I suppose, yes, you are right. I'm not entirely wrong. <laughs> Just trying to give you some credit, Tom. I appreciate that. There and it is. Guys, so we do continue the round and we continue the match. Clutches are live now, of course. And We're there they go. Them. Good old point for a big old clutch party here. Strong to throw first. Oh! And he smokes it. He was high. And it rocked back in just so ever tenderly, staying in the board as it looked like it might have fallen out. But now, Julio. To keep the big axe, big axe match going, he's going to throw for clutch. Oh, did he and get this it? Is it it looks like he's just slight. Yes, he is. So we head to round seven. Our prediction holds true. It does. Minus the fact that we're only going to have six rounds of big axe. <laughs> Thanks for that first round. <laughs> As the players take a quick sip of their Woodhouse lagers from our sponsor, Woodhouse Brewing Company. Wetting their whistles as they prepare for round number seven. Entirely separate of the sponsorship. Uh, my favorite beer before I was even a part of the axe throwing community was Woodhouse Beer. And as soon as I joined the axe throwing community and it was in every venue that we go to, I was pretty excited to get it on the regular. Nice little treat for you. Yeah. <laughs> but again, thank you to all of our sponsors today. As you see them up on the banners here at the venue for for sponsoring the National Axe Throwing Championship and supporting the National Axe Throwing Federation and the sport of axe throwing. We couldn't do what we're doing today without them. So no. a huge thank you to all of our sponsors. And also a huge thank you to, ooh, to all the people that have come out for the tournament today. The turnout today is unbelievable. Oh. It's an amazing, amazing thing We've to see. We've got at least 300 people in this crowd right now. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> crazy in here. Um, and just the growth of the sport in general across axe throwing throughout North America and now the world. Yep. We're seeing venues pop up all over the place. We're seeing all sorts of people, all different walks of life trying it out. And uh, you know, you join a league, you start learning how to throw your bullseyes and soon enough you're gonna end up in the tournament like this. So it really is anyone's game. It truly is. As Julio blows some kisses to the crowd, turns and throws a bullseye, keeping his tied at 20 here into the fifth and final act of round number seven. Clutches have been called. And both have been hit. We're going back to Big Axe for the sixth time in this A championship. Tom, I think you should get a lottery ticket. You just called the uh, seven rounds with Big Axe on all of them. I was, I was wrong on the first round. Oh, did we round. go, did yeah, we go six round. we rounds of Big Axe? Yeah. Fair enough. Julio missed his clutch. <laughs> and that was the only throw that he's missed so far <laughs> yeah, in this match believe, inside of Big Axe. <laughs> which is insane in itself. Yeah, so. But Julio uh, to start us off, looking for his bullseye here in Big Ends. And he hits it dead center through the screw hole. The cleanest bullseye I have seen. Strong to match. And he hits it. Clutches are live again, but will they go for it? 
No question. Was that a real question? No question. Was that a real question? I apologize for asking <laughs> such a silly question. Oh. And here they go. Double big axe clutch. Julio Romero to lead it off. Ooh, oh, he's wide just of wide. that left side clutch. Just wide to the right of it. And here is Strom's opportunity. If he hits this clutch here, he is going to the finals. He's going to the finals. Julio will stay in the tournament if it comes to that, but will be bumped to the B. And he nailed it. Nailed it. Your Strong champion, Riley, poised to defend his title. Wow. Splitting that big axe clutch on that left hand side. Unbelievable. To claim his spot in that championship final as we go down to floor level and Matt Wilson to interview both Julio Romero <laughs> and Strawn Riley. Oh my God, guys, what an incredible match. You guys are no strangers to competing together. Uh, Strawn, tell me a little bit about that win. What's that moment like, man? The win doesn't mean as much as you think. The fact that I'm here with Julio means everything. We've been talking about this four years ago, Yorkdale Sunday, Wednesday Green, let's go. That's where we started and uh, here we are, baby. Here we are. Awesome, amazing. Julio, how you feeling? You ready to go? You got another match ahead of you here. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to fucking bring it back. I'm gonna come right back for Strawn and we're gonna do this shit again. You looking for a rematch here? One match away from a rematch? 100%. All right, let's see it. Nice work, boys. Badass. Thank you, Matt. What a great moment there for Strawn Riley as he hits that big X clutch to move back into the championship final. I am joined now by Big Will Gordon. How are you, good sir? I'm Great to have really you good. back on the mic. Thank you so much. We thank Ian Bobby Christensen, who joined us earlier, Matt Wilson, the commissioner of the National Axe Throwing Federation, and Matt Red Moreland, the host of the National Axe Throwing Federation's, what's his show called? Uh, he does all the stats so we don't have to look at weekly. Up. That's right. He does that's that right. for us because Matt is great with that show. And now we are joined by our pro, <laughs> Big Will Gordon. You're losing, using that term pretty loosely, but <laughs> uh, I did compete today and I've, I've met a lot of these competitors. Um, I played Lachance earlier. He's the one who knocked me down to B bracket. It did go to five. We we're the best three of the five at the right. time. Yep. And it was the judge's call about a missed clutch on the fifth round to go to the game. That's a tough goal. As we hear the cheers from the crowd. So we have it that looks cheer. like Lachance has moved on. Knocking comes out now, of the B bracket in round number set. Uh, looks like round number six. Took him six rounds, taking it four to two. As the crowd <laughs> swarms the lane to raise him up as he moves on to the B final. Well, we know that Comp came into this tournament with high expectations put on him by most of the throwers and the Axelrod yep. community. Yep. He came out of uh, the U.S. as really an unknown only six or eight months ago yep. and put up incredible numbers. And here we find him coming in this tournament with, ex with a, an extreme amount of pressure. And when I talked to him earlier, he's just like, you know, I'm just doing this one moment at a time. Yeah. yeah he came sure. against a buzzsaw like Lachance. I guarantee you, all these guys that did the bracket pools yeah. on this tournament did not have Lachance beating Comp or even maybe getting it this far. So we're going to take a look here at those brackets that you were talking of there, Big Will. They'll pop up on your screen here momentarily, and we'll talk to them as we get set for the B bracket championship. The winner of that will move on, as you can see here. So we have Lachance just defeated Kump. He'll move on to face Julio Romero, who we just witnessed dropping to Strawn Riley in the A final. And that could have been an A final on its own. I mean, that could have been the tournament final and on it, and of itself. It and, it, and it could be still. It could be yet. But I'm sure Lachance will have something to say about <laughs> that as we move forward. As we take a look at the A bracket here, Strawn Riley, the lone competitor remaining, guaranteeing himself a top two finish. I, uh, I talked to Strawn earlier today when we first started going to the uh, venues. And I asked him, I said, how do you feel him today? And he's just like, he's like, there's so much pressure yeah. coming as the past champion. And his numbers are incredible. You look him up on stats. He's got like the first four 
top averages of all time. His numbers are incredible. Yeah. And he's just like, I feel as though I need to kind of find the fun back in the sport. And I think he's right. found it today. You see he's got big smiles on his face. He's got the emotion. And he's throwing very, very well. Very consistent, very smooth. And as you said, with that smile on his face, talking with his competitors between throws, just having a laugh, enjoying their time together. Obviously wanting to win, but enjoying their time. As we take a look here in a moment, we're going to go to our sponsors and thank them again for all their support today of the National Axe Throwing Championship, of the National Axe Throwing Federation, and the, and the sport of axe throwing. Without them, as we've mentioned numerous times, we wouldn't be here without them. Providing right. us with, with the food, with the drinks, with the wood, with the prize money for today's event as you look and see them rolling through on the screen there. Great people in the crowd, great people sponsoring the sport as it continues to grow day by day. I can tell you that the Axe community is unbelievably welcoming. If you're a new thrower and, you've, and you're watching this and you're not sure but it's something that's interesting to you, go to a club. There'll be people there that will mentor you. There'll be people there that will show you how everything runs. You really need no experience to get involved in this sport and here we find some of these guys, like let's look at Comp, literally months ago, rising to the top. Not because the sport itself is that simple, it's because he's dedicated, he has people to learn from, teaching him the sport, teaching him the strategy. And as again, the cream rises to the crop. When you have cream in your club, you want to become above them. So he has a strong cup to throw out of. They taught him, he took it and ran with it, yep. as we do with every other club that we are involved with. Yep, and, it's, and you've seen it through the day, like new competitors, old competitors, everyone just doing so well today and just seeing the, that level of newcomers that is just setting the tone at, even at the lower stages of the tournament with the 192, even making it this far in your first year is incredible. It, it really is. When you look at a pool of between four and 5,000 participants yep. and then that getting down to something around the mid 2000s and then coming out of that in the top 200 192 to be specific and then come into this tournament yep. with this kind of energy and every match I've been here four years when I first came into this tournament you might have had an easy match here and there right. it doesn't matter what your ranking is look at comp yeah over a hundred right. in ranking and here he is and here he is doing so well finishing in the top four top four Guaranteed his spot in the top four, and that's for your first year throwing. He's to come so into consistent. a tournament like this and do that is incredible. The as we take a look, sorry, sorry Will, to interrupt you there. As we take a look at the stats here for Lachance, as we get ready for this B final here, an average score of 61. He's thrown 41 perfect masters. Hit 54.9% of his clutches when he calls it. I have to be honest with you, those stats are actually a little bit surprising to me at his level of performance and how he's made it through today. I would expect those to be a bit higher. Well, and, and maybe they're a little low. These are these are his life stats, so these are maybe oh, these from are his, stats. Early, his earlier stats. Okay. okay. And as I, we take a look here in a moment, sorry, you can continue on. No, no, no. But looking at Julio Romero here, he's got a high score of 81. We looked at his stats earlier, but again, highlighting the 107 perfect matches and 0% one's hit. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. That's pretty good. That means he doesn't <laughs> miss very often. No, he knows, he's no, he's a veteran of the sport. He's been around for a couple years now. He's a big personality. You hear the crowd chanting his name. Just a great competitor. He's one of the most loved very throwers in the sport. Yeah. He reaches out to the community at large. Everybody knows him. He cheers your successes. So he's not just doing this for himself. Yeah. If, if, if um, he's invested into the sport, he's invested in you as a thrower and how you, and your success. Right. Yeah, no, it, it, and you see it just in how he interacts with the other throwers that are here today and how he interacts with people that are just in the crowd. He loves the sport. He, he loves the chance right now. He's just having a fun time with him at the moment, him and Starling. These guys are not unfamiliar to each other. Not at all. So this will be a very loose match. I expect them to have a lot of inter interaction between each other. 
and the way the chance is throwing, especially that match he had earlier, which was insane with yeah, all the big man. axe clutches. That was something else. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of that big axe clutch yeah. here in this next match. So as the two competitors get prepared here for this will be the B final. So these we're down to the final three, Will. Down to the final three. So the winner of this match will move on to face Strawn Riley for the championship final. The loser goes home, but goes home with some pretty full pockets thanks to our sponsors here today. Yeah, Taking home a portion of that prize money of that $20,000 pot. Well, we, we both know in the last the last couple of years how the prize money has exponentially yeah. grown in the sport as the interest has grown, as the expansion has happened within our sport. And we look at before maybe being top four or yeah. maybe top six, maybe getting a little piece of that pie. We're now really expanding it down a little deeper into the pool. But again, that top spot is much greater than it has ever been. Oh, for sure. That that $10,000 first prize is, is huge. And it, it all goes out to our sponsors and to the growth of the sport and, and to, the, to the members of the National Axe Throwing Federation that have gotten us to this point and allow, that have grown the sport. And you see it in all the people that are in the crowd today and all the different venues that are represented in the crowd. And all right. Everybody, just great people in a great community as it continues to grow. We look forward. On. Can you hear me? We don't want to look too far right. forward yet as we still got it two matches been, left here today. It has been a very right. long but day so far. I know those of you in skills bigger. are going to continue throwing Matt into the Wilson. night, which is great. But I just want to give it up real quick for all the referees and the staff on the lanes that held it down all day today at all the venues. <laughs> give it up for Cherry Street, for Bait Shop, for the staff at the bar. Amazing. Give it up for the film crew. These guys are killing it. And this match right here is our actual semifinal. The winner of this plays Strawn in the final and has to beat Strawn twice. So let's give it up for these last competitors. This is Kerr. We got La Chance. And we got Julio. Let's do this! All right, thank you, Matt Wilson, for getting the crowd hyped up for this B Championship. Oh. Again, the winner of this match between Julio and the Chance will move on to face the defending champion, Strawn Riley. I'm very excited to see this match. I'm going to throw my uh, hat into the ring of Julio. Okay. I know he uh, would like to go back and visit Strawn, and get a little revenge on that last match. He didn't make many mistakes. It was a very, very close match going the full distance. And I think um, watching him and watching Lachance and competing against Lachance, I think that uh, his game has been kind of neutral for the last match. Right. While he's been advancing, he hasn't been kind of lighting it up. Right. Yep. Couple, couple missed throws here and there that has found himself here. It's a great position to be in. It's, it's not a bad spot to be in. Right. He wants more, and hopefully he can make those corrections and get himself to that next stage. I'm going to take the chance just to have something against you. <laughs> we can't both have the same guy here. And he's been throwing well today. Like We, we saw that match earlier with Stefan, just clutch, 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 That's and right. away they went. Like just well, when we look at this match, when I say that I'm putting it in Julio's camp, I'm talking that the difference might be the one or two throws yep. through this entire match. We're not yep. talking like a walkover. Yep. We're talking a couple oh, of throws. Going to be tight. Yeah. Tight for sure. We expected, as we were saying with Red earlier, to go the distance, to go seven, and to go seven rounds of Big Axe. So we'll see if these two, what they have in store for us as they start us off with double bullseyes. I expect nothing less of these two competitors at this point in the tournament. They're highly focused. They've been throwing at a very high level all day. These bullseyes, are not simple for them. They are concentrating to an extreme amount yep. to just last this long in the tournament. Yep. Great level of stamina and that arm to keep going, but that's where that gentler throw kind of helps out. It helps with that longevity through the day. You don't get as fatigued as you move through this 192 person bracket. This bracket started early for each one of these competitors. We all started. Uh, probably showed up at the venue around 9 o'clock this morning. Yep. Got a bit of practice in. If you got to buy the first round, we're probably throwing around 9.20, 9.25. So here we are, 
Five o'clock in the afternoon, still competing. Oh, and a tough break there for Lachance as he rolls out of the clutch. And Julio takes round one, letting him know to just brush it off, move on to the next round. That's right. That could be a sign of fatigue. Yep. Um, it could be just a bad break. Yeah. As well, for sure. It, and it was just a little bit of an over-rotation. It, it got in there, and it just kept going ever so slightly. That can happen. You can get a bit quick. You still have to check your lanes. And this is what it means. It's not just throwing. It's everything. It's from your setup, your foot placement. It's getting that arm set. It's throwing through the target. You're doing this repetitively. You have one little break in that. You can have a negative result. Yep. Let's see if he can make the adjustments here. As we go double bulls again here in round number two. Julio leading one round to zero. Once again, the winner of this will move on to face Stefan Herta. Er, apologies. <laughs> apologies <laughs> to Strawn Riley, the defending champion. That's right. Well, Stephon I was looking at Stefan across the room, and he got well, into my head. <laughs> he's, a, he's a big presence he within the he sport. Is. So it's, it, <laughs> we know how that can happen. Thank you for understanding that. As we go, top break there for Lachance as he goes high and falls down by two points here into the fourth act. 15-13 for Julio. So I, I would think that Julio may go clutch here on the final act, up by two in the later rounds. I like the move when you take the win yep. and not settle for big acts. Well, we saw it from Stefan in the previous round against Lachance. That's where, how Lachance got here. Stefan missed. Lachance hit his bullseye. And Julio makes no mistake and takes a two to nothing lead. The chance has some work to do. Julio's game is strong from top to bottom. His big axe, his clutch, his hatchet, um, really something to watch, to hang around with him and just throw with him is incredible. I lost to him when we went to chop Tober. He knocked me out. He was flawless, flawless in that, in that tournament. And again, speaking to the level of competition today, the champion of that tournament is not even in the tournament anymore. I know. He just got knocked out previously before, before just, this match. It just goes to show you on how well, yep. how well and what the level of competition is. One minor slip up yep. here and there, and you find yourself on the, on the, on the, on the L side of the bracket. <laughs> it's all right. I've been up here all day, big boy. <laughs> As double bulls are hit again, and we head to the third act, tied at 10. I, I really enjoy when I can watch two competitors smiling, throwing with enthusiasm, talking back and forth, having that interaction, yep. really keeping communication between the two of them. It, it's, it makes it fun for us to watch as well. For sure. And we go to the final act, tied at 20, here in round number three. Clutches have been called. Julio splits it. A chance. Splits it, and we're going to Big Axe for the first time. That's right. We'll find our first uh, taste of how they're feeling right now with the Big Axe. Um, my expectation would be coming into this moment, depending on who goes first, I would like to see bulls from both of them. Again, I'm going to give my edge to Julio because of his consistency only, uh, proving consistency. Right. We'll see. A chance to lead us off. Ooh, he's low. That might even be a one, Big Will. I agree. It looks from a uh, big one from our position he here. Puts up the single digit, taking a one. That's a tough very, break there. Very uncharacteristic at this point in the match. And Julio with an opportunity to put it away here in round number three. And he does it with a bullseye. And he takes a commanding three to nothing lead. Still anyone's match. The pressure really does go over to the Shanks here. He really ha has no option here but to make zero mistakes. He has to throw perfect. Yeah. And He's even, I guess, super perfect at super this point. Super perfect at this point. Well, with how Julio has been throwing, because he has also gone super perfect each of the rounds so far. That's right. So in the tournament here, he's, he's throwing a super perfect or natural 81 uh, through that uh, format. And of course, I'm sure it's been stated earlier, uh, a perfect match is really 75. So he's been throwing above and beyond what perfect really is. Yeah. Getting that 27 in each round. As we stay tied here into axe number two of round four. Double bulls hit again. 
different approaches to the release of the axe, but very similar result. Their hand position, the way they release, are almost identical, but their movement into the bull is different. Yep, you see the chance with a little bit more upright in his axe. Julio has it tilted back towards himself, the head of the axe that is. A thrower would start with it tilted back to help the rotation of the axe into the bull's eye. Yeah. A thrower that starts with it a little bit more vertical, that means um, they've developed a technique where they can get the rotation they want without having to tip that axe yeah. back towards them. Clutch hit by Julio. Clutch hit by LaChance, and here we go. Back to Big Axe for the second round in a row. So I think LaChance will probably go first here. Oh, Julio's up Julio first. stepping in to go first, yep. Big, big breath by LaChance. He's got a little breathing room here. Oh, what do we have here, though? Julio might be a bit low. Calling for the device, just to be sure. Looking from our vantage point, it looks a little low, but it could device differently. I've been fooled many, many times with the device. Well, our veteran referee, Glenn Cross, is out to measure, and he'll let us know here. And it's a three from Glenn Cross. The fingers come up. Julio with a three. You never want to just give away points. Nope. It's a wise move to get the device. Sometimes, because paint is in your favor when we're scoring here, Yep. sometimes the result is better than what you look with the eye. Oh, exactly. Ooh, no doubt on that one, though. And LaChance takes his first round of the match, pulling him back to three to one. The pressure that he was under for that shot, I mean, I guess he could have got a three and moved on to the next one, but to take that win with the bullseye, I think it really could have given him a boost yep. going into the next round. A little round. bit of confidence heading into round number five. Stays alive and now has one under his belt. Anytime you can make the shot that you want under pressure, that's going to help you into the next round. So we head to round number five, three to one. Julio in this best four out of seven B bracket championship. Part of me, it's just a B bracket final. Well, it's like a championship yeah. nonetheless. At this point. Again, very workmanlike right now. The level of concentration, they're still keeping up, they're still performing. Again, the rep as we say, the repetition, it's a good thing in the sport. You want to repeat the performance that you're doing axe after axe. Keep that consistency as you go. That's right. And as you can see these are, are. Sorry about that. Uh, no, you're good. Tom, what I was going to say is that what we're really looking for is when you look at these axes, they're not even touching paint a lot of the times. That means they're very, very focused. They're nice. not wandering the outside the scoring zone. Yeah. Both of those previous throws just went dead center, not touching anything. And about as in the middle as they could be as Julio hits his clutch. And the chance forces Big Axe here in round number five as he looks to force round six. We switch it up here. This is a gentleman's agreement. Yep, they made that decision at the start, the first time they went to Big X, and then do, agreed that they would just rotate after that. So they did that rock, paper, scissors to decide the initial, but alternating from there as the chance hits his bowl. Julio, a bullseye, we continue. The, the, uh, the pressure moves over to Julio yep. now. A three, and we have ourselves a three to two match. I, I believe it's a bull. It should be good from here, from our vantage point anyway. He's going to let the chance have a look, which is, and he says yes, no doubt about it there. So both players agree, as we've talked about a couple times. We're going on top. what the value is, so we move along. And clutches have been called as they are now active. Both players hitting their big axe bullseye. To open the door for big axe clutch. Whoa! Again, with the clutch, you just got to break paint. No more 51%, you just got to touch green and the chance with maybe a percentage point on that one, but he gets it. Just the tip, as they say around here, counts. That's right. And he took advantage of that in that, in that throw. And Julio does the exact opposite and goes 100% wow. right down the middle. Julio is known for his clutch performance with Big Axe. He's really stood above a lot of throwers because of that exact throw.
A deep breath and a hit. Julio gives it the thumbs up. The chance pulls it out. And he puts the pressure back on Julio. LaChance really digging deep, keeping that pressure on Julio. And Julio makes no mistake, two in a row. I can tell you today, performing, and, and, and you, you know this too, Tom, just hitting two clutches, big acts back to back, is extremely difficult. Under this kind of pressure, is, is, is phenomenal. It's a little bit mind blowing. LaChance makes it three. He's been tight on all three, but he's got it, and that's all that matters. So he, Julio. He's, with, he's throwing the egg door, which seems to have some kind of magic for every thrower that touches one. Julio with. Another one right down the pipe. No mistake, and that's three in a row. And both players are ultra perfect, as we named it earlier. It, is that what it's called, the ultra perfect <laughs> That's what we've now? decided. We had to go above and beyond as both players threw their 27s and have so far hit nothing but bulls and clutches with big ends. Oh, and there's our first mix with chance. Okay. Just low. And now, a chance for Julio to move on and get redemption against Sharon Riley. A crowd favorite here by all measures. And he does, he makes no mistake. And Julio Romero will move on to the championship final to face Strawn Riley. We have the rematch. As we go down to floor level here to Matt Red Moreland, he's going to have an interview here with both Lachance and Julio. Look at those total scores Julio across the board saying he here. wants to go first. So, yes. Here. Hey guys, I'm uh, I'm here with, with Julio Lachance, and uh, Julio has something to say first. What do you want to say? Uh, just everybody, give it up for Phil real quick right now. Give it up for Phil. Phil, Phil, do you, you have anything to say? You, you've had an amazing run today. I think everyone's really proud of you. How are you feeling? Just overwhelmed. You'll happy, be able to hear everything. Excited. It's kind of ask for anything more. It's been amazing. Thank you to everybody. Thanks so much, Phil. That's that's incredible. Julio, how how are you? everyone's cheering for Phil right now. Great job, buddy. Great job. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> how, how are you feeling going into the next match? Tell me how, what's going on right now. Uh, terrible, because if uh, Monday playoffs are going to come around and LaShawn's going to slap me for this one, so <laughs> um, he's going to remember this. Okay, buddy. I'm going to send it back up to you guys. We're going to get ready for the next match. Thanks, Red. Great hey. interview there again and great competition as I am now joined by Avery. Hey, Tom. Welcome, Avery. Great to have you aboard. Absolutely. We have to be here thoughts on the day so far amazing throwing like 81s for days crazy how many 27s people are getting i just wish i could do that in my own game. you'll get there you'll get there avery armstrong right That's yeah avery armstrong. avery armstrong i didn't i thought that was it then i was blanking as i was introducing you so Tom i called right? right yeah that's right yeah. yeah great to have you out though avery yeah absolutely. Um, but you'll get there. You'll get to that point. You're throwing in your first season of league. You I just did my first year of it, yeah. First year, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I qualified for round one, but did not quite make it to this level. So I'm excited to be here and watching it firsthand. All right, so we're going to take a look here at Strawn and Julio's solo stats from the day so far. If we take actually first, we're going to have a look at the brackets here to see how we got this far. Strawn Riley and Julio Romero in a rematch of the A Championship, now facing off in the championship title, for the championship title and a chance at the Wilson Cup. Now, Julio Romero being the B bracket winner must win two best out of sevens in order to win. Because Strawn has not lost yet today, it is double elimination, he has to be beaten twice. So Julio will need to win the first match, 
force match number two, and then hope for the best in match number two. That's right. It's a tough road for Julio, but he can do it. We saw him hit nothing but straight clutches, especially with that big axe. His big axe game is strong tonight. He's got this. And Strawn hoping to repeat, not have to play that second match. As we take a look at his stats here, throwing a 73.7 average. And that clutch rate, just 81.9. 81 .9, and he's thrown 100 or 1,120 clutches. Wow, that's incredible throwing there. He does not miss. <laughs> not often, as you can see, he had zero ones. As we look at Julio's for for the third time today because Julio keeps moving on. And just very impressive stats again, but neither competitor has hit a zero. Here, zero, wow. Incredible throwing uh, by the mom. Apologies, a one. As our scoring rate, our scoring rate here, the ring scoring for anyone that's just joining us is the black ring gets you five points, the red ring gets you three points, and the blue ring counts for one. Anything that hits and falls is zero to drop. Anything that hits outside that blue ring is also a zero. You gotta get it inside the paint and it's gotta be 51% or more. We score from the outside of that line in and the outside of the line out, as you know, Avery. And then anything that's tight, we call for that device and we get it measured out if we need to. But we always go to that competitor first. You, you decide amongst with your opponent. If the two competitors can agree, then that's what the point value is and we don't need that device. That's right. Lots of good sportsmanship happening today. Sometimes there's been those tough calls where we have to call on the second official to come on in, but it's doing great and people are throwing nothing but bullseyes right now. Speaking of our officials, our main scorer for this match running the iPad is Matt Widow. And our official referee being called in is Glenn Cross if he's needed. Glenn Cross as you can see him on your screen there in the striped jersey. As we take a look at our sponsors again, thanking them for all of their support today. As the crowd is chanting York yells, we look at the sponsors here. Bose Love Tread, or pardon me, Bose Brewing. Cherry Street Barbecue, always good food for us. The Greater Good, great little pub downtown Toronto. And Fogler Rubinoff, an excellent sponsor for us. Gardner Roberts, MNP. Bath, Harley Davidson Motorcycles, RBC Foundation, the, the Doc, Doc Ellis. Ellis. That's where we all want to be tomorrow that'll, night. <laughs> that'll be the after party later today with a few. Fewer more of Bo's luck or Bo's going down. I keep just calling their one brand of beer, and a few Woodhouse Brewing companies. I'm sure will be enjoyed later this evening, as they have been today. But we thank all of our sponsors for all of their support today and through the year, supporting the sport of axe throwing, supporting the National Axe Throwing Federation, Absolutely. and supporting today's championship. We couldn't have been as big as we are today without them. It's huge. For sure. And we have that $20,000 prize pool. We are down to the final two that we've looked at a couple of times. It gets real now. Super As we exciting. bring it up on the screen here, as first place walks away with Avery. $10,000, must be nice. <laughs> but second place, no slump there. They get 3,500. Yeah, and then third with $2,000. And that will actually go to LaChance today. LaChance walks away with third prize today, so he will be going home with $2,000. Our fourth place competitor walks home with $1,000. Fifth and sixth, sixth get $750 each. Not bad, not bad. Seventh and eighth are walking away with $500. And then ninth through twelfth gets $350 each. It's been a great day of axe throwing. Our sponsors have allowed us to have that prize pool to have this event today, you see the large crowd that we've got here, probably three, 400 people in the venue today. At the very least, absolutely. We got a large crowd, the biggest prize pool ever awarded in an axe throwing competition. And the biggest axe throwing competition that we've seen. Absolutely. 192 people, Incredible. down to the final two. Yeah, it's amazing that we squeezed it all into it. <laughs> right? And we thank you, a thank you to Battle Pickering, Battle Yorkdale, 
and Battle Villiers for hosting the event today for the National Axe Throwing Federation and the national championship today. Yeah, the staff are amazing. They had everything run smoothly from the get-go. They're just fantastic people to work with, so super stoked that they were able to pull it all together, and we had a nice, easy day. The staff have been great. The referees have been great. The crowd has been outstanding. As always, it's the battle way. It's the battle way. It's the axe throwing way. The NATF <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. The community itself, axe throwing community, where your family, no matter which venue you're at, we have people from all over the world that we're all cheering on. And and all of the National Axe Throwing Federation members that are here today, making up this crowd, we've got. People from all over the world, as you mentioned, from Canada, the U.S., from Australia, from Poland, <laughs> all Korea, over. all over the world, represented here today. Amazing. Their friends, their families, the crowd is getting hyped up. These finals. As we get prepared for the championship final between Strawn Riley and Julio Romero. That's four out of seven. Let's go, boys. And once again, Julio Romero being the B bracket winner must win two matches in order to move on in this tournament and be the champion today. Absolutely. No easy feat against last year's defending champion, but. He's got a tougher road. He got knocked out of A bracket, so coming back from B, going for those two wins back to back, it's a tough road, but not something that he can't do. And if anyone knows that it can be done and to watch out and make sure that he's hitting his throws, it's Strawn Riley because he did it last year. Yeah. He was the B champion. He worked his way back. He you know, won two rounds of best four out of seven. The good thing about being a B champion is that you stay warm. You're yes. constantly throwing, whereas the A bracket, they're waiting for that, pr that player to continue. So as long as Julio doesn't get too tired, he's got this. Yes, being, being that double elimination, having the A and B bracket, you're right, Avery, the, the, A, the A winner waits that little bit longer while they wait for those final B bracket matches to wrap up. Exactly. We hope that Strong doesn't get cold, but he's no stranger to this competition. He knows how to stay nice and warm up, so he'll be good. Plus, he's got that fantastic cheering step section. Oh, that's true as well. He's got... What do we have? About 20 t-shirts in the crowd of Strawn as Superman. Super Strawn, I believe they were chanting earlier. Yeah. And then we've got the crowd chanting for you at the moment, Avery. I've got a couple Your venues here. Your fans from Calgary <laughs> yeah. and Niagara Falls. A little bit everywhere. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> it's my battle fam. I'm expanding across Canada. <laughs> Give them a wave. Let them. Hey guys. There, there they go. And they my appreciate Niagara it. family. <laughs> and my Niagara family over there. <laughs> we got our final. Strong All right, there's Matt Wilson on the line. Versus Julio. It's going to be amazing. I know we're all going to be fired up about it. I have to just ask, please do not rush the lanes when there's a champion. There is a lot of very valuable equipment here that will close this place if it breaks. All right? I can't afford it. All right? So do not rush the lanes. We will do an award ceremony moments after it. I know I'm so boring. I'm sorry. All right? God, please respect that for me, and let's cheer our hearts out for this one. As, as Matt Wilson gets the crowd hyped and ready to go, giving a final warning as there's a lot of camera equipment and a lot of gear around the space right now. No matter who wins or who loses, Unlike the, the crowd has to hold back. Unlike the traditional versus photo, we have a nice lovely photo, them sharing the love right there. With the little hearts made from each other's hand. Yeah, two Yorkdale boys, is that where they're both striving from? I believe so, yes. As the crowd was chanting earlier, they were both original. Julio still is out of Yorkdale. Strawn came to Pickering in time, but I believe he did get his start at Battle Yorkdale. Right. Rock, pair, scissors to decide the lanes. He now finds himself, though, strong, that is, down in the little warmer weather down in Scottsdale, Arizona, as he's opened up our, a battle venue down there as the GM of Scottsdale. He's staying nice and warm in sunny Arizona, unlike the rest of us here in Canada, or Calgary in my. <laughs> a little colder there for me. All right, and it looks like we're ready to go. Rock, paper, scissors has been completed. 
as they do a final chat to decide the sides. And they give a cheer to the crowd to get them ready to go. They're ready to have some fun and they're ready to compete for $10,000 and the Wilson Cup. Here we go, round number one. The biggest honor of the year. Double bull, tied, act number two. Strawn Riley is on your left. Julio Romero is on your right. And that might be the first time I got that correct today. <laughs> there we go, two more bullseyes. Double bulls, tied acts number three, tied at 10. <laughs> On to the fourth act, and we're still tied with double bullseyes. These gentlemen are not missing. Dead center, right through the wood, past the paint. No device needed yet again. 100% in the bullseye. Clean bullseye. Into the fifth axe, they both call clutch. And they both hit. Nicely done. This and goes we're straight to big axe. Headed to big axe, that's great. Who will throw first? They will decide here momentarily. As they will do a rock, paper, scissors, as we've seen a couple of times today. Um, they'll rock, paper, scissors for that first initial decision of who's going to throw first. And then from there, they have tended alternate. to alternate after that. Yeah. We expect the same. They're looking to hit some paint. Whoever gets the highest points gets to move on. If they both hit a bullseye, they can then go for the clutch. Bullseye and for strong. No mistake there as he goes right down the middle. Julio to match here. And he does, just kissing the line on the left side of that bullseye. They call clutch, going for that little green dot for the seven points. The crowd goes silent, everybody's waiting for this. Strong just it's tucks close. it in, we believe. He says yes, but looks good. Widow, nope. He will call for Glenn Cross. Glenn Cross will come in and have a look. It's tight. And he, no doubt about it, gets up close, makes the call. Nicely done. And the crowd gives a cheer to Glenn, a seasoned veteran and fan favorite. <laughs> Julio has to match that shot or a round goes to Strong. And nice. he does, uh, no mistake, and they stay perfect. On to big axe number three, they call clutch once more. Looking to stay ultra perfect, yeah. as we've dubbed it today. Nice. Uh, That's a no doubt one. this time, you're right. When you split that clutch, it, nothing feels better. Especially with that big one. Right? <laughs> if only I could. All in time, Avery, all in time. And nice. Julio, no mistake either. And we stay ultra perfect. Ultra perfect for the fourth axe in Big Axe to break this tie in the first round of our finals. Looking to break the ice and take that one to nothing lead in the match. Ooh, but Strawn just wide to the right side of that left-hand clutch. For the win, if Julio hits this clutch, he's got the round one. As he sets himself up on the big axe line. Small chant from the crowd. Oh, Ooh, but he's high. And Julio misses and two. Wide. Back to Strawn. Are they gonna go clutch again? They are. Why not, Shocker. right? Why not? <laughs> At this point. Bullseyes are too easy for them. <laughs> Has become the theme of the day. Going to throw first. Ooh, oh, he's wide into that same again. spot. Just right. wide to the right of that left-hand clutch. And Julio with a chance to take a one to nothing lead here with a stick. He had the chance the previous axe. Will he miss again? And he gets it this time and takes a one to nothing lead. 
Julio Romero takes the lead in match number one of the championship final. Well done, Julio. So both players take a quick break here to grab a swig of some Woodhouse and prepare for round number two. There's a quick technical adjustment to our one floor camera there. More yeah. love between these boys. A great first round there though, as both Absolutely. players were super perfect. Strawn, until those last couple of, last couple of uh, Big X clutches where Strawn was wide, Julio went high, Absolutely. Strawn wide again, and then Julio You know Strawn's going through his head exactly what went wrong on those last two throws, he won't let it happen again. He'll make the necessary adjustments as he moves forward here, we Absolutely. hope. Absolutely, very technical thrower. And Julio not allowing, he let him off the hook once, but not doing it twice. Absolutely not, you can't give him a window. So as he takes the one to nothing lead and a tied second round so far, 5-5 five, five, double bullseye. Second X, they tied again. And the hatchets stay perfect. Nothing but fives and clutches so far. Into the third act of round two. Fourth X, still tied. These gentlemen have very similar throws, eh? Very gentle, the, as we've seen with a number of competitors today. Just that softer, as Ian Bobby coined it, the, the Canadian pinch. Oh, the Canadian pinch now. The, the Canadian pinch, I believe, is what he was calling I've it earlier. I've heard the Canadian flick. Or the flick as well, yes. It's all part nice. of that. Nicely done. Soft. Double clutches. We're going to Big Axe once more. Right back to it. But that soft, gentle throw that's just light grip on the axe as you just place it where you need it to go. Absolutely. Huge difference from three years ago when everyone was still throwing much, much harder. And part of that development of the sport was gentlemen like Stuntman, our Bose representative, exactly. as we talked about one yeah. of our sponsors today. He has that gentleman throw. Stefan Herda, as we've seen earlier, those two kind of introduced that softer, gentler throw to, to the greater community as they were winning championships using those softer throws, and now it's been adapted throughout. Absolutely. You see it travel. We're slowly, after the Urban Open in uh, last summer, they're seeing it more and more in the States as well. They're developing that softer throw. I believe that's where that Canadian pinch or Canadian flick <laughs> yeah. term came from, was <laughs> from that Urban Open. When all the Canadians went down south. As nice Julio nails his clutch with the big axe. So we're on our tiebreaker. Strong Riley has to hit the clutch in order to match that shot. And here he goes. To keep round two alive. Oh, he hit that spot, that's the again. third time in a row. He can't quite Julio. get it dialed in here. Julio takes round one and two on the finals into the third round. So this is big for Julio as he does need to win match one to force match number two. Absolutely. He's the B champion, or the B winner. He needs to win to give Strawn his first loss of the day. Absolutely. And force that second match. And currently sitting up two to nothing. There's power Good to spot be rising to be. from the B bracket. You stay hot, you stay in control of your axe, you've got it. And two nothing is a good spot to be, but it's not a comfortable spot, it especially not against somebody like Strong. Absolutely, Strong's not gonna let him get away a third time. This will not be a sweep. As Julio <laughs> and Strong interact with the crowd a little bit as they prepare for round number three. As we look to the crowd for a little bit, now we're back. But Avery, our thoughts on how we think the rest of this match is going to go? I think Strawn's going to pull away with at least a couple of rounds. Julio is doing amazing with his big axe, forcing him to get there. But we shall see. With Strawn going right three times in a row on his big axe clutch and not quite hitting it, I think he's going to make the necessary adjustments for the next one. Whether it's a footing thing or he makes that necessary just slight tweak with his axe or whatever he needs to do. I feel like you're right, he, he'll make whatever adjustment. He's too experienced to not make the adjustment. It's actually right. even surprising to see him hit that same spot three times, but also <laughs> that's how consistent he is. <laughs> that's true. It's a miss, but he's hit that exact same spot yeah. three times in a row. Exactly. But I do expect this one as well to go, go the full seven here, but we'll see if Julio 
has something to say about that as he tries to take a three to nothing lead here in round three. Absolutely, super important to have that that first few matches in. But yeah. As long as he doesn't get comfortable, we're good. We'll see if both players can keep their hatchets alive here. Their perfect streak with the hatchets alive. I hope I'm not jinxing it by saying it, but <laughs> let's be honest with these two. I have zero effect on how they're going to play. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's all a mental game at this point. Any one of these players, all day, any one of these players could have hit an 81 in their sleep. So it's just a matter of who is on today. And these gentlemen are just on. This is a slight break here as we fix a minor technical difficulty. But we're just about ready to go. As we get the thumbs up and we're ready to go, as Julio gives us a wave, good to see you, Julio. Good luck out there. <laughs> and he refocuses. It's just great to see the smiles on both players' faces. They want to win, but they're staying loose. They, they want to win, but they're equally cheering for the other. You know they're both going to be happy no matter how this goes. As they both hit their bullseyes, and we go to axe number two here in round three. Tied at 10 into the third axe now. They're so consistent that even the spots on the target that they're hitting are the only part that's getting you. Julio a little higher on that one, but still 100%. Into the bullseye as we stay tied at 15 into the fourth axe. Two axes left here in round three. Nicely done. Two more bullseyes. And Final here it comes, axe. Avery. Clutch is called. Clutch is called. And they hit it and stay perfect with the hatchets and go back to the big axe. Back to big axe. Now, well, I believe it's Strawn who is up first as they've been taking turns back and forth. He yes. is. There we go. He's going for the bullseye to try and get as many points as possible to go to that clutch. And here he goes, setting himself up. Nicely and he done. drops it in there nicely for five. And Julio to match. Looking to take a three to zero lead here in the best four out of seven match number one. Sheer determination. Nicely. And he hits his bullseye in now. Clean bullseye. So now they're calling clutch. Strong's up first. We're hoping he makes the proper adjustments on this one. Clutches have been called and agreed upon by both competitors. Now, as we've talked about earlier, if, if Strawn throws and hits or misses his clutch, Julio doesn't need to go for the clutch. Oh, as it, ah, he, as he jinxed him. Here. So Strawn is high. Julio doesn't need to throw for clutch right now. He could throw for the bullseye. But Absolutely. they've made that that agreement, that competitor's agreement, to throw Absolutely. for the clutches. So they're going to stick with that. Oh, Ooh, doesn't both. get it. It's, it's good. good, he says. Thumbs up. Called. Strong does as well. You can see the paint as he pulled it out. And so Julio. Julio takes a 3 nothing lead. If he wins this fourth one, we go right into the next round. Next Julio. set of rounds. Next match. Mm -hmm. Now, 3 nothing. 3 nothing. 3-0. It's still anyone's match. It's like still it, anyone's it, match. It really is. Like We've seen it earlier, a few matches earlier Absolutely. on. Come down two nothing, comes back. Absolutely. Three nothing pulled back to three two earlier as well that we watched. You got it. And with a competitor like Strong, defending champion, he's not going to just lay just over and him. take it to Absolutely them. Not. Match two. He wants to get back into this one. He wants to end it in in a single match, best four out of seven. He doesn't want to have to throw that best of fourteen. Absolutely. So Strong's in a good spot. If he does lose this round, he still has another match That's to true. go. But he doesn't want to go there. More Double bullseyes. Versus there. But Julio's just on fire right now. If and he goes to Big Axe again, he's a little more consistent in this match than Strong. We did see, however, Strong did move over to adjust his big axe throw. And missed high, which was He strange. missed high. Nice. Yeah. Maybe just a few too many adjustments to his throw. Just slightly. Onto the fourth axe, still looking for those bullseyes. We hope it's not nerves getting through. Does he feel nerves? <laughs> We're not sure. We do think he is a robot. Part robot, for sure. But? Clutch is called on the final axe. Julio 
is currently Nailed. up three to nothing as they hit their clutches. And we go back to Big Axe. Now Julio is up first for this Big Axe round, provided that they continue all to main. And you're right as the players were trying to figure it out there, but it is in fact Julio. Good call, Avery. Can remember and slightly. <laughs> We're heading to round four, big acts, overtime here. Looking to bowl in. Nice and Julio does. Drawn to match, anything less than a bullseye. And Julio. we go to match two. Nice and he hits, out. so now clutches have been activated. Now, will they call it? That is up to them. And of and course they do. They do. <laughs> Why not, right? That's what the crowd loves to see. They love a good big axe clutch. And really, they've been throwing it all day. It's got them this far as Julio hits again. Why not continue with what you're comfortable with, with what you know you get, exactly. you're confident in the throw? It's what they throw in their regular season. Why switch it up for NATCs? John Riley. Oh, and he dialed it back in. He's a there little bit go. tight, but he's pulled it back in. Nicely done. We're back. And now to we're it. back. They called clutch again. The clutches yet again. You're right. For the third round of Big Axe here in round number four of match one. Julio, Ooh, Julio does he tight. hit it? He's going to. He's saying good. Strawn says, if you think it's good, I trust you. Strawn takes Glenn word Cross for it. is seeing it from the far side, and he is nodding yes. Our oh. official on the far side. So Strawn to stay alive in match number one. And, and he gets it. He's starting to pull it back in. We saw him miss three left. A little bit high. Sorry, three to the right of that left side. A little bit high, and then he sunk one that was just tight. And now he's pulled it back a little bit more even there. But again, it doesn't matter. As long as you're touching that green, which he didn't on those previous four. Just and Julio might not have here. This is another close call for Julio that he's calling. No, he Strong does. Says it's good again. Thumbs up from both competitors. <laughs> and a little bit of nervous shake there from Julio as he wasn't sure, but he gets it. Strong stared on that clutch once more. And in the same position here on the fourth. Oh, oh, and he's low this time, and Julio, Julio takes the first sweet match. match number one. Wow. Right, we go to the next one. Strawn is not done yet. Strawn is still in it. That is his first loss of the day. Of the year. Of the year, actually, yes, you're right. He's been undefeated through the league, which is insane in itself. We're going to go down to the floor right now to match. Red Moreland, formerly known as Red. Hey guys, I'm uh, coming to you live from the floor here. I just want to clarify to everybody, because this is a double elimination tournament and Julio has lost earlier today in the tournament, we're going to go another round. So it, to win the tournament, the winner of this next match is going to be your tournament winner. But because Julio lost earlier today, that first win, it is not over. We have to go one more match, and the winner of that is going to be your new champion. So here we go. We're going to go back up top to the new winner and the new coverage of the final match. Here we go. Tom and Will, please take it away. Thanks, Red. And yes, I am rejoined up here by Big Will Gordon. Thank you to Avery Armstrong for joining us there to call that first match with us. Welcome back, Will. Thanks for rejoining us here. Thanks, Tom. We got an exciting finish ahead of us and the potential first-time champion with Julio Romero. I would, uh, I'm a little bit at a loss of words just because the level of, um, of proficiency of axemanship I've seen here today, um, the consistency under this amount of pressure is extremely, extremely rare to see. And to see these two guys performing at that level consistently is really, I was talking to somebody over here saying it almost looks robotic. You gotta remember, they're throwing a piece of steel yep. that weighs around two and a half pounds, total weight might be around three and a half, with about a four and five eighths inch blade on it, around 22 feet. 
into a target that's not only about seven inches around to qualify to go to a two inch target. It's pretty remarkable. Well, and, and just watching that round, the, the most shocking thing was almost that it was a sweep. Considering right. when you look at just the stat line itself, outside of that big axe, both players went super perfect the entire four rounds. It, exactly right. Now, prior to this match, I talked to both competitors. I talked to both Strawn and Julio. Um, Julio was more of a congratulatory, hey, Big Will, stay in it, man. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling loose. I talked to Strawn. It was a little different story. He's like the pressure people put on coming into this tournament was strong, strong, strong. And then we had Mike Kump kind of thrown into that yep. conversation for a long time. And he's like, man, it's been unreal. And he's had so many changes in his personal life, moving into the US, taking over the uh, GM job at a, at a yeah. battle location. At Scottsdale, Arizona. Moving to Calgary for an, a stint between that and for him to perform and come through all that with the, so many eyes on him to perform at this level. I feel the next seven, or I'm going to say the next match, will go seven. Yeah. You, you, you got to think that just with all the stats that you just laid out from Strong and everything that he's been through this year and even just through today going undefeated to this point before meeting Julio again, that he's going to rebound here in the final match and that we're going to go that full seven, as you said. Exactly right. Again, we were talking about millimeters of difference yeah. in the performance on the two um, uh, throwers here today. Um, Julio, again, his consistency throughout this tournament has really been something that we haven't seen for a long time in the yeah. big acts. Yeah. Strawn has delivered quite well in that area. A few small little blips with concentration. Yeah. I believe the day is getting very long. It's very hot in here. Yes. High level of concentration. He's being talked to by everybody in between the matches here. And he's got his fan crew that's wearing his shirt. I have one. <laughs> I just can't wear it right now, but I have the Super Strong shirt. I'll call super it that. Super Strong, that's what we call it. There right. it is. And um, they're taking a minute here just to kind of uh, relax. Reset and relax, as you can see, as the trophy is coming out and has been polished off. Similar to the Stanley Cup, it has been polished and brought out of its case. That's right. Put on presentation as it will is guaranteed to be presented to one of these two competitors at the end of this match. Well, that trophy would look pretty nice with a ten thousand dollar check put in it too, wouldn't it? Yeah, wouldn't it would. It? Now the thirty five hundred that the loser walks away with isn't so bad, but that extra ten will go far at the bar this evening. I think. There's a little more shine on the ten than there is <laughs> on that thirty five hundred. And again, speaking to that. That sponsorship money we we want to thank our sponsors again for all of their support and allowing us to do what we're doing here today with the national axe throwing federation here at the national axe throwing championships for 2019 displaying the best throwers from 2018 year we're finishing it off wrapping it off here at the start of 2019 and we wouldn't be able to do that without our sponsors that have been here from the beginning and that That's have right. helped us through to this point and will continue to support us, we hope, as we move forward. Because they want to see this sport grow as much as we do. That's and that's, that's what's great about having them on board. That's exactly right. Now, if I look at the tournament bracket, no matter how you filled it out, this was a real possibility yep. for a final match. So it, it, with all the chatter that happened pre-tournament, um, with some of our U.S. competitors who threw very, very strong today, yep. represented uh, their sport, which is really new into our southern borders, yep. and even across what well, we had seven countries represented here today, um, expanding like almost weekly, yep. that we have two friends that know how to throw, or who do throw with each other, or have been in the past, is pretty, is pretty uh, incredible. It certainly is, and they're about to partake in their third match against each other of the day. The first one went to Strawn Riley in seven rounds. The second one went to Julio in four rounds. And let's see what happens here in round match number two of the championship final. Match number three between these two competitors on the day. Who will take home the Wilson Cup? We're going to find out right now is Julio. That might be his first miss in about 100 throws. <laughs> now they had a bit of a cooling off period there. 
They did. Um, a little bit of a distraction in between the matches. Could be that as momentary lapse of concentration. Yep. But he regains it and stays within two here, 10 to eight. In Julio fashion, of course, a smile through it all. Always, always smiling, always laughing, always enjoying his time, just being on the lane, throwing that ax, being with his competitor. Now, I don't suspect Strawn will do anything but throw a clutch here on his final ax, and that should end the round. I, I believe that to be true. Yes, he did call clutch. And he gets it, so we head to round two. Strawn Riley takes the first round of match number two. Now, when you're coming through the rankings as you're in a tournament like this, you make that judgment on how you're performing, whether clutch is your strongest move or you go bull and then go to big axe. Yeah. And sticking with what, what you're confident in you're going to hit. That's you're right. Not wavering from that. If, if you miss your clutch, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the round. You can move on to that next round. It's not a big deal. But if you're confident you can hit it, there's no reason not to. End that in round, get it out of the way. In particular, these two performance, performers, that's the move that I would make. It. These guys are just so consistent and so well at what they do. That clutch is the move. So act number two of round two is double bull's eyes again. And we're tied at 10, act number three. Now just an observation, when you look at these two throwers, they know each other, they've thrown together for uh, uh, many leagues or at least in the same area. Julio high there, but it's good. Sorry to interrupt you there. They look like twins. <laughs> They're dressed the same, they have the same grip, same stance, same delivery. Uh, Avery was commenting on that just before she left and just how similar they are noticing that in match number one. It, it is quite funny to see and speaks to how, oh, Strawn misses his first clutch in a long time. And Julio hits and we're tied one to one here in round three of match two. Tied one one, it is best four out of seven. There's a lot of energy in here right now. And we just want these guys to be able to stay within the moment, throw by throw, shot by shot. It's still up to them to execute, even though it looks easy to the person that might be watching right now. These guys really have to stay in the match. And Strawn dials it back in, hitting his bullseye. Staying in the moment is definitely huge, as you just said, Will. Like, and you've seen it from throw to throw here between them. Like the Julio and Matt round one threw that one three, but dialed it back in when he needed to. And now we're tied. Strawn misses his clutch, but has dialed it back in, hitting his bullseyes again. Again, I think we're going to see this as a back and forth match, going to Big Axe. Uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a fellow thrower, I really would like to see it all come down to like a Big Axe yeah. kind of conclusion. <laughs> as we got last year, we were treated to that last year when Strawn won. And, the, and just he was in Julio's position. Sorry. No, I was going to say, just seeing some of the interaction, the interplay between Aaron Gerard last year and Strawn Riley leading into that final throw, which determined the tournament, yep. was pretty uh, interesting and something that we don't see very often at this level. Yep. Just that, hey, I'm not going to declare what I'm going to do right. until you throw. And, but they, they made that agreement in advance, as they do here, where they, as you'll see, I'm sure, if they both hit their bullseyes here, and we've seen and we talked about earlier today, having that competitor's agreement to, to go with and stick with the throw that you've, you've decided upon. Whereas Aaron last year, he made it clear before that big axe throw that he was going to go wait until Strawn made his throw and decide what, whether he would go bullseye or clutch. Oh, as Julio goes high there. And Strawn takes a two to one lead. Julio hits a three instead of the bullseye. And we go to round four, two to one for Strawn. Now we're jumping matches here. It's alternating wins right now. I have a feeling this is what we're going to see for the next four matches. Yeah. You know, four rounds, I should say. So here we go, round number four. Two to one lead for Strawn in this best four out of seven. Match number two, championship final. The That's winner right. The takes winner takes home the Wilson Cup $10,000. Tied at 10 here, ax number three. Oh, and Julio low on that one. That's a tough break. Just a little bit of an extra snap at the end there, perhaps. 
typically when you're throwing uh, deep into the match and you get a low three like that, you're, you're not setting your ax into your position for release. You're getting a bit early and you have muscle memory on how far to release and it comes a bit low. So we see here Julio down by two, but he throws his clutch first. But it makes no difference because Strawn hits his. Julio is just trying to put a little bit of pressure, maybe getting the Strawn's head a little bit to try and knock him off his game. Exactly right. Now we have um, what we call a, um, again, a, a gentleman's agreement whereby the person leading might throw first, but that's not a rule. You right. can go in as strategy throwing first to put the pressure on the other opponent. Yeah. So here we go. Strawn Riley looking to redeem his title and the Wilson Cup leading three rounds to one here in round number five of match number two in the National Axe Throwing Championship final. And they're both double bulls, tied at 10, axe number three. <laughs> I get, I get kind of wrapped up in watching the tournament myself, watching these guys perform at this level, the consistency. And we're getting really right down to the wire and Julio is under the gun. He's gonna need to at least force Big X here to give himself a chance, but hoping for something, a mistake from Strawn that he's not giving him so far. Strawn As they both go double bullseyes again. Strawn has really reined it in after that first match, losing those four straight in a sweep. Clutch is hit, and we're going back to Big X. So Julio will need to win this Big X to force game six. Just really to stay alive. Yeah. Um, he'll finish second if he, if he does not win this round. He starts us off here. Of course, they're going to go bull into entry to, to clutch. Bull is your gateway points that we're looking at to get into this clutch battle. And he hauls it back in after throwing a three with his last big X attempt. He hits that bullseye this time. And Strawn will need to match here to keep this round going. I expect him to match the five as Julio just threw. Ooh, he does. Just kissing the line there, but he tucks it in. That ax had a little less steam on it and it kind of floated it in there and he still made it. It was looking like it was about to slide. You're right, Will. Yeah. Didn't quite make it to the board, but it made it just enough. Oh, split right in half from Julio. Again, I'm amazed that they, he, he couldn't have put more ax into that two inch target. No, definitely not. And he's been so consistent with that today. And he gets it strong with a chest pump and a shirt pull. Continues this round. Now Strong, when he does deliver on a shot, he does turn to his competitor and has some kind of motion. It's either a double fist pump, the shirt grab. Julio matches though, not intimidated. As he tries to amp the crowd and get them back on his side. Although I don't know that they ever left it. <laughs> He's got a lot of fans here. And he gets it, we keep going. The amount of focus that these uh, two gentlemen are displaying right now under the pressure for $10,000 is pretty incredible. Yep. Something else for sure. Whoa! And Julio's blowing away, so this is it. Comes down to this potential. A miss here, we keep going. But a stuck clutch, and for the second year in a row, Strong Riley will be the National Axe Throwing Federation champion. He's fired up, he's seen that miss, he's pointing like this is going down right now. He came over, he tapped the wall, he's lining up. He's fired up for this shot. Here we go. Yeah! Oh, is it? It's close. He says no and wow. we keep going. He doesn't even let the referee come in and have a look. He's blowing away. This time last year, that was in the clutch. This match was done. Strawn was the champion. Today we keep going. Is this Julio's opportunity? Oh my opportunity. Lord. This is actually blowing my mind right now. Julio 
dials it back in. And here we go. Lots of emotion right now. So much on the line for both of these guys. Cooley will stay in. Strong to take the win. Oh, strong to stay in. And he's high and outside, and we have ourselves a three to two match. Julio takes round five. We head to round number six of match number two. Julio has pulled it back. It was three to one for Strawn. It is now three to two. And Julio looks to force game seven. It, it, you can get into a funny position when you're leading in, especially if up, uh, Strawn was up three to one. Sometimes you know you have a bit of wiggle room and it helps you relax a little bit into your throw, sometimes outside of the area, like the level of concentration you need to maintain. Julio has no other choice but to maintain that highest level of performance just to stay in the match. That's right. And he hit his shot, and we stay in this match. Tied at 10 here is Julio with a little bit high. And I say a little bit high, he's barely touching the three zone. But compared to what they've been throwing for this entire match, it was almost missed. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, these guys aren't even touching paint for the majority of their throws. That means they're dialed in. And as I've said before, and maybe some of the other um, um, uh, conversations that I've had with people, is that their focus point is literally a pinhole in the center of that bullseye, which is seven inches in diameter. Yeah. That screw hole is looking awfully big in the middle of that target. As Strawn hits. Julio's wide! Oh my goodness! Strawn Riley! Back to back! Champion! Wow. Wow. That was entirely unexpected. I didn't caught me off guard. I didn't know what to think with Julio missing the clutch. He doesn't miss. He doesn't. He hasn't all day. But it doesn't matter now. Strawn Riley is the National Axe Throwing Champion for the second straight year. A kiss from his girlfriend, a yeah. hug, Let's, and a few tears. A lot of emotion right now. I, I what guess, a performance. As I said earlier, we talked at 9 o'clock this morning, or 9.30 this morning. He's feeling a lot of pressure coming into this tournament. So many people, a lot of them here today. Wow, okay. I just put what an unbelievable on. finish. Uh, I, I don't know if any of us expected that, that finish. That was an amazing, amazing match. Both rounds just going and going and going. I, I can't believe the finish here. But we're going we're gonna to have the uh, tournament prize presentation and trophies in just a moment. Uh, the trophy here to my right. We're just going to bring the winner over here. And we're going to bring it all in. But uh, thanks so much to our sponsors. Thanks so much to everyone who's here today. This was an incredible, incredible tournament, an incredible crowd. What a showing, and what an accomplishment for our winners. Uh, I believe we're gonna follow it over here with Wilson, who's gonna be taking our winners back over to the trophies in just a second. Uh, just wanna say one last thing here, guys. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations to both. Strawn for the repeat, our two-time champion. Give it up for your two-time champion, Strawn Riley, everyone. Okay, Julio, get over here too. Where's the chance? But first things first, that was an insane match. What a roller coaster of emotions. I was losing it. Strawn. Strawn, come here, buddy. Hold that thing up, boy!
down, come on down. First off, okay, we got three crazy stories here. First off, the chance, man, what, where did you come from? It was amazing. What is going on? Third place, Mr. LaChance. Unreal, buddy. Amazing stuff. <laughs> okay. And here we go. What an epic final. Some epic matches throughout the tournament. Mr. Julio Romero in second place, buddy. Unbelievable. Hold it up. And the last one you know, taking off with 10 G's, my man. Strong Riley at number one. Hold it up. Let's get all three of you guys together. Is that cool? everything but we're good all right everybody thank you so much thank you so much for being a part of this the day is not done hang out have drinks throw in skills because that shit is still happening and uh hopefully i'll see a bunch of you tonight and tomorrow what the fuck just happened love you guys love you guys All right, staff still on skills. If you guys could go to your lanes, we're going to finish off time trial.